just get my um, we'll let Greg get set up. Um, our first application is continued from February 25th. David and Mary Ellen Drinkwater are Southern Valley's landing, request a special permit in accordance with section 262 for a two story detached warehouse and salt. Within the salt marsh, the private conservation district for the property located in Southern Valley. Good evening. Here's Ed. Good evening. For the record, my name is Gregory Morse. I'm a registered engineer with Morse Engineering, representing David and Mary Ellen Drinkwater, the property owners that are here with us tonight. We were before the board last month. What we're here for is we're here for a special permit in accordance with Section 460.2, which is the Salt Marsh and Tideland Conservation District. The applicant was proposing to construct a two-story <coughs> detached garage. It's highlighted in orange on the site plan. Um, I believe we had answered all of the board's questions at the last meeting. However, in the regulations, there was a requirement for certified mail to be sent to the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. That has been done since the last meeting. Um, I don't believe there are any outstanding comments to address. Um, and we never got anything from planning or conservation. No, yeah, oh, just that one saying that they. Just the two, yeah, just the one memo from each. Nothing further. Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay. Um, Alrighty. So, um, any questions from any member of the board at this point or comments? I'm just rank, trying to remember <laughs> what 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 was the. There were no issues. I, I think it was just a, a matter of uh, getting the letters out. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. okay. Um, any outstanding c comments or questions from the audience on this application? Okay, hearing none. Um, do we have a motion? Uh, John, you the motion. Sure. Uh, motion to. Uh, Grant request for a special permit in accordance with section 460.2 uh, to rent a two story detached garage within the Salt Marsh and Tidal Conservation District for the property located at 7 Barry's Lane. Uh, according to the um, map dated 12 2013, job number 13 331. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, if anybody's looked at the agenda, we are, for various reasons, going uh, a little bit out of order today. So the next one we're going to do is the um, one Ford place, which was also continued. Yes, hi, I'm Bill Orenberger. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. and Mrs. Tian Jimmy are out of state and they couldn't be with us tonight, but I have with me uh, Jim Duffy, our architect, and also Ralph Cole, our surveyors here also. And at the outset of this, I would like to submit to the board some letters, letters of support of the application, which are uh, <coughs> various neighbors and butters, and I think I got five copies for everyone. Uh, we don't have a presentation <coughs> board because, in essence, we're not doing anything to the site other than the existing conditions. Uh, on the property, uh, which is in the Greenbush District, uh, we have a pre-existing non Putting assessor's map in the applications, a pre-existing non-conforming uh, building and use that's been there since uh, 1850. Presently, 
and it has a non-conforming setback of approximately uh, 12 feet from, uh, from Country Way. Uh, in accordance with this, uh, because of the setback is non-conforming, there's a single family use in there, but the portion of, because of the non-conformity of the setback, it makes the use in that non-conformity also non-conforming. What the proposal here is, is to create, is to create four modest apartments with a total of five bedrooms, there's an existing four bedroom house there. Uh, there's an existing parking area that is already there, that is for eight or nine vehicles, which exceeds what is required under the bylaw. And under, and under section 820, it requires a finding of the board that uh, it should not be substantially more detrimental to the existing non-conforming uh, use in the neighborhood. Uh, basically, with the coming of the train, uh, my client's position is, I think there's a real need in the area for smaller, more affordable apartments, uh, as opposed to the large single-family uh, homes that are there presently. Uh, there is a separate access way right off of right off of Ford Place to the property, and there aren't any uh, new curb cuts or anything else. Any of the work done on here would be strictly strictly interior work, which Jim submitted some uh, some plans to you, just showing how. Uh, the four small apartments would be uh, constructed on this. Uh, we think this is a good. We think this is a good use. This is also in situ. It's overlay district also, and you could go through the overlay district permit and also have a commercial use in the first floor. But uh, my clients feel the best utilization of this property is for you know four modest apartments. Uh, <coughs> Uh, we, we feel that because of the nature of the use, it's a, resident, it's a residential use. Uh, we don't feel it's substantially more detrimental. There literally are no exterior alterations. Other might be a light or something put on there. Jim's going to do all the work inside, make sure it complies with all the building codes, uh, handicap access, accessibility, and things along those lines. And uh, for those reasons, I'll. I'll end my presentation right now and, let, and answer any questions that myself, Jim, or Ralph can have for the board. Okay. Um, one question. You said it, it exceeded the requirements by the bylaw for parking. What What are the requirements for the bylaw? Uh, for one per market? bedroom. And maybe and there's a total of uh, maybe a total of five bedrooms that are proposed here. That's what I counted. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and the only problem I have is that your um, your plan. The existing conditions plan doesn't. Um, it's 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 looks like a pretty good sized parking space, um, but it doesn't lay out the parking spots. And I think that you know I would like to see that to make sure that you know it is sufficient with parking. I don't know that you'd I don't know that you'd have to increase it at all. It doesn't look like you would, but you know I don't no, know. No, uh, dimensionally we wouldn't. But if there's a condition in the finding that that uh, to provide the necessary parking, uh, you know, a minimum of five parking spaces, or even a minimum of six parking spaces, is more than adequate. Okay. And we can, to the building commissioner, prior to getting permits, we can uh, demonstrate to, to his satisfaction there. All right. Any uh, questions from the board? That sounds like you're not doing any work outside the existing footprint. Everything no, is right. all interior petitions, walls, moving, right. plumbing. Up, up, you get a so. residential sprinkler system. Oh. Yeah, no, uh, okay, no dormers or anything like that that you're adding or, okay. nope. And uh, the same access is going to remain for the basement and those type things as well. Right, there's um, limited access for the basement now. Yeah, so kind of crawl space remains. type. <coughs> Anyone else? Okay. Do you have anything to add? No, uh, I just, you know, there there is a need in this town for legal, affordable, Apartments oh, uh, for single people, um, and, you know, retired people. So, and it's uh, where they're not changing the exterior of the house, and they're not increasing the bedrooms. I guess it would be my opinion that, and the board can, uh, you know, the board can authorize it. That it, it would, I would concur that it can be granted. Is there anyone? Oh, go ahead. Oh, is, is there existing four bedrooms or existing, existing five? four, and it's going to be five bedrooms. Yeah. So there is one, uh, one, one extra, one, yeah. one additional, but the parking again covers that. Yes. And it's on town sewer now. Yes, it is. 
So you'd just be increasing Correct. that permit to ask them. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Anybody in the audience wish to be heard on this application? Okay. Do we have a, a motion? Uh, it's a finding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pass it around. It's like your classic. It's a finding. Mm -hmm. or special special no, it's special permit. Really I think it's a special permit. They're young people. All right. Motion to grant a special permit to allow the conversion of use to five bedrooms pursuant to a plan dated 11514. Well, I mean, I think it needs to be no facts. I think we need to change the use because it's a currently a single family residence. Yeah, for four, right? four apartments. Right. Oh, it's a single family. Okay. Right, right. Change the use. We'll start again. Yeah. Two. Motion to grant a special permit to allow a change in use from a single family residence to a five bedroom apartment pursuant to the plan. Dated yeah. 115 14. Five bedrooms, four apartments. Five bedrooms, four apartments pursuant to the plan. <coughs> and do you want to add in the parking conditions? Right, before, before that, yeah. That, um, <coughs> subject to the middle of a parking, yeah, a plan showing striping for five parking spaces. Um, can, I, can I just make one caveat? It's, it's actually it's not an asphalt surface, so you might have trouble putting parking spaces, but we could put like little things that said like spot one, two, three, four, like yeah, I think if you put it on the plan. Oh, on the it doesn't plan. have to be okay, marked yeah, on, yeah, the, on, the, on, on the plan. Actually, yeah, on the, but just so we just see the dimensions. Five. 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 Got it. Five. Right. Sufficient so the condition parking. is for the Sufficient spot parking. shown on the plan. On the Got plan. It. Thank you. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll submit a proposed decision for the boards. Very good. Thank you very much. This goes downhill from here. You feel like you have two seats for these guys. <laughs> Backloading our public comment. Okay. Keeping track of my papers here. Do we need to bring up? Oh. Yeah, I just put it on the record. Okay. <coughs> Bill Orenberger, and I'm, and I'm here tonight with uh, Susan Whitney, who's here on behalf of her son Ryan, who's out of state on on business and couldn't unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. Also, uh, we have uh, Paul Marabito here, and I'm going to ask Paul to make uh, a brief presentation to show you what we're up to. Then I will cover uh, the bylaw criteria relating to that. And Paul and I will be available to answer any questions the board or anyone else uh, may have. Oh, before we get started, <coughs> we need to, uh, Mr. Lynch would like to put something on the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Frank Lynch. I live at 155 Edward Foster Road. In, in abundance of caution, uh, I filed a disclosure 
that um, sets forth where I live, how far away I live from the property. Um, can't even see the property. But I am in the First Cliff neighborhood, neighborhood and I'm aware that the First Cliff Association has sent a letter in uh, taking a position on this, so I just wanted to be cautious about the fact that uh, people know that I do live on First Cliff as well. I didn't, don't, I see that I'm far enough away so that I don't legally have a uh, conflict and I don't think I have a conflict. But, um, and also I, I would note that I'm, like, since we're all here, I'm not going to be a voting member on this, but I'm going to participate as a board member as we usually do unless anybody objects, and if they do, this is the time to raise it, otherwise I'm just going to proceed. No. Great, thanks. Okay. Yes, and, and, and Paul, if you just if you do it in such a way that hopefully you can catch <coughs> it at least on the TV and most people can see it. Okay. What, whatever is, it seems to work. While he's setting up, um, I, had a, I had a question, and sure. um, I, apparently I missed the email. I was in court all day today. But um, there was an issue that one of the objectors brought up about the ownership of the property. Right. you want to address that straight sure. up? Sure, Ab absolutely. We were in the position that the applicant to this, when the application was made, was Susan Whitney, trustee of the trust. Who owned a portion of this, the house and the majority of the property is owned by Ryan. Trust is just actually a nominee trust for Ryan's benefit that was set up for some type of tax purpose. So to avoid any, that was adequate anyhow, but to avoid any, any ambiguity, we actually deeded the property so it is all in Ryan's okay. name and you have the deed that's been filed with the land court. Okay. So now all four parcels that we're talking about. Correct. A, B, six, and seven are owned by Ryan Whitney. Exactly. Okay. Okay.
Bogus. That's the subject of the application. This is Edward Foster Road, Sister and Harvard. This is the breakwater. Um, and you can see this is Roberts Drive, and you can see the house lots around us. Um, this, these two lots by far are quite a bit larger than the house lots that you see in the a neighborhood of um, First Cliff. So the final option we put together, the one that we felt fit best for the property in the neighborhood, is the subject of the application that we submitted here. What we're asking under this application is to create a 50-foot lot around the existing dwelling, and the lot would go all the way up to the high water mark. Um, and this is the, the, this is the lot we're asking the uh, zoning board to approve this evening. There are sewer connections in, in the street that were installed. There's two of them, one, one for a new lot and one for the existing dwelling. Um, I don't believe the dwelling has been hooked up to its sewer connection at this point in time. There's also, there, there's also some uh, existing easements for utilities going to a dwelling in this location here owned by the uh, Butter White. There's also a 12-foot uh, way on the, on the lot owned by uh, Carlton and O'Brien that services this house. What they do is they come in from Edward Foster Road and they go into their garage here. This way continues on to an existing easement shown on a land court plan that this easement continues on to the existing dwelling over here. This dwelling has no frontage on the street, so its only access is through that existing uh, right of way over Carlton's lot and the easement over the uh, Whitney property. Um, the planning board has endorsed this plan. We're simply waiting for the approval of the uh, zoning board before they will uh, release that plan for recording. Um, I think with that, I'll end my presentation and open it up for questions. Do you have something, Bill? Uh, no, I'll go through the criteria. If you'd like me to do that first. Well, let's get questions yeah. answered okay. first. Um, one question I have, and it's a, it's going to be a very non-educated question. <laughs> when you're going down to the water, how? What's the definition of upland? Upland? Yeah. Upland is anything that is not classified as a wetland or a marsh, uh, a bog, a wet meadow. We had our uh, botanist, Brad Holmes, walk that entire property you see in blue. And that, that's all along right up to the coastal bank there. Okay, so, the so the bylaw defines it as um, it's measured to the high water mark. Okay. So there's no issue the fact that you go down to the beach with being upland. No, that's correct. Okay. In, in the plan, don't no, set that, that parcel is all upland. Okay. Is, um, just, just so you know, this. The uh, one portion of, of Lot A is, this, this portion of Lot A is unregistered land, and this portion here is a uh, land court or registered land. And I think you may see in the application that was submitted, um, the uh, owner has been uh, taxed as, this, this parcel is, is being taxed and has been taxed as a, a billable lot. Did you do? Uh, didn't you start doing that when when they approved the sewer connection? Probably no. From no, no. before no. It's always before been that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just w w one point of clarification, though, is <coughs> it is confusing between registry of reeds and land court land, and that's the reason why the numbering of the lots is different. Because regardless of how the town planning board may number lots, the land court has a specific designation. So it's easier as <coughs> the notes show on the plan is the two lots, the land court land and the non-land court land together are a buildable lot. So that's why so it's like that. And what is the square footage of, uh, square footages of the two lots that you're um, proposing? Well, uh, we were, po we're proposing uh, the one lot, which is the subject lot in blue right. there. And Paul, what's that, 30 what thousand? This, this blue lot is 36,089 square feet. That's by adding lot A and parcel 6 together. And that leaves how much on parcel B? Parcel B? Or lot B uh, and parcel This um, 20, This portion of B plus parcel 7 is a total of 40,512 square feet. And just for 
um, for the audience, what is the requirement of, um, of, of the lot <coughs> to be created then? It's twice the required up. Yeah. Right. Yes. We're in our three zone, 10,000 square foot 10, requirements. Square foot. Foot. So you're over three times the amount. Correct. Okay. Alrighty. Um, do you have any anything else? And then we can ask, see if any. Well, let me ask for Neil. Do you have any comments, Neil, so far? Um, no, I'm still. Seems something the, the, the board has authorized before. Yes. Okay. Any questions from the board? We could start there, and then then we can let Mr. Orenberger do his thing. You have some questions. There is a question. Um, this question has come up before, and um, one I'd like to have clarified. And obviously, I think the board would like it to their satisfaction. Mm -hmm. My understanding is. We have the right to authorize a 50-foot frontage lot for the construction of a single-family detached dwelling. Right. We're creating a 50-foot frontage lot that already has a 50, uh, detached dwelling constructed upon it. What that, what that is, Ed, is under, this is the same situation that uh, the board has already acted on, both Border Street, the two lots, and also on Surfside, uh, Surfside Road. And what is on 610.3 of the bylaw? 610.3 of the bylaw permits the, uh, permits the creation of a uh, reduction in lot area uh, as long as it doesn't remain less than the area and dimensions required under the section, which is 610, and this complies with that provision. <coughs> I guess that's my question, does it? That does answer your question or does not? No, I guess the, that is my question. Does yeah. this comply with the... 610.3 yeah. seems to address the issue that you're raising. Right. It ties back in that 610.2 would apply to right. building a new lot or making the 50-foot frontage lot the lot that the house is already on. I know it's been a question we've, we've dealt with before. Um, personally, I've never felt it was... Yes, sir. Clar clarified to a point that it um, uh, might withstand a contestive body. Um, I, I just don't know. Anyone else? Um, yeah, I've just for clarification, the creation of lot A is before us today. The creation of lot B. Is, is, not, not, is not right. Correct. That's been approved by the planning board, and, and we don't have purview over correct. that. Correct. Yes. That's my understanding as well. Yeah. Kind of okay. weird. Why you wouldn't? I don't understand why they're not done at the same. Because essentially they're done at the same time by doing one year, well, allowing the other. Well, they I can't do one. Lot B is an way. allowed lot under the code, right? It's allowed as of right. Correct. Right. But not, but not if you if we don't allow lot A to be created. Yeah. If we don't allow lot A to be created, lot B doesn't have the land to well, be created. I mean, right. They could make lot A a non buildable lot, couldn't they? Yeah. A lot A is already built on. Well, yes. <coughs> Therein lies that, the problem. That's exactly yeah. what the problem is. You can't create a non buildable lot. I mean, that's. But, it it right. wouldn't be a dilemma if the, if the argument that you can't create a lot, a 50 foot frontage lot on which a structure exists. Right. Um, then it isn't a dilemma. Once we have a structure on the property, then it becomes a dilemma of time. Maybe it's just a dilemma of timing, but... Well, the, the only point I make to that, Ed, was uh, hearkening back to what Paul discussed, is I, you know, I feel for the reason we just discussed is 610.3 covers this, because believe me, the, you know, the, the thing that's crystal clear is option, option A that Paul showed there is the, the lot B there, you make that one the 50-foot frontage, but you know, the Whitney's are cognizant of the fact is the <coughs> feeling at a house, if you, look, if you look at where lot B is, it, because of the right of way and utilities, it's a fairly modest building area there, mm -hmm. which is, again, it, at least in, in their opinion, is, you know, you know is an area there. Their, their current plan is for school and her husband, Dan, to build a retirement home there. And if you did do that as a 50-foot lot, the the parcel where this would be placed would be behind Mr. O'Brien and in front of Mr. White. And as far as I know, and, and even though I know views on a protectable interest, but they are cognizant as trying to be good neighbors that they didn't want to place a house there. And so that is why they, as Paul said, they thought that this was the best one. 
Well, yet another aspect that comes into play in the in the siting of the two lots or the or the planning of the two lots <coughs> is the flood zone. Yeah. Um, you have a total different set of con of uh, construction standards sure, on yeah. on the lot as proposed versus the 50 foot frontage lot, which we could approve without even entering into this question. And I know we have had this problem before. You mentioned Surfside, and I think when it was done, there was a, um, my recollection is there was some question of whether it was the appropriate thing to do. Well, um, it, was, it was also done before then for two lots on Border Street mm -hmm. in situ. But the, the, other, the other criteria which Paul didn't mention is, because again, the intention here is by creating this 50-foot lot with the existing house on it, under the bylaw, it limits that so only a single family dwelling can be there. Mm -hmm. That has more than adequate frontage to have a two family or two unit condominium on there. And, and by doing this, it, it permanently makes a situation so that won't occur. Because that, that you know, that if this is, the, if this, if the board feels this is a situation <coughs> to be approved, then that locks that in. So, in, you know, in the future, that could not be uh, a two family dwelling. And you also couldn't build on parcels six or seven. I mean, I know they're going to be subsumed in the ultimate Correct. Lots, but, but there would there. be no dwelling there. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Okay, could I just follow up on a comment? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm comment. Mm -hmm. a thing here. First of all, um, the, um, on lot B, the uh, buildable area, because of all these easements, is this area here. That's uh, relatively small. The side yard setback is only eight feet, which would be about in here. But because of the easements, it's actually pushed back to here. This isn't a problem for the applicant because the home they, they were proposing to build here would be relatively small. It's relative to if, if there was a house here, the floodplain isn't a problem. We could have a, well, a uh, full foundation, concrete, it would, it would have breakout panels in it because it'd be in an AE zone. This, this line is as it's scaled off the map. The, the current zone was nine. Which were, uh, elevation nine is down here, but when you uh, digitize this line off the FEMA map, it's, it's in this area here. But if we were to do the engineering, we would go by the actual ground elevation, which would be down in here. But still, and under the new maps, I think that the new contour is 14 or 15, which comes through here. You can still put the house in an AE zone or flood zone. That, that's not an issue. But as Bill mentioned, we didn't want to put a house between the O'Brien and the White. And where this is going to be a small one anyway, this would be the best fit. You keep saying small. Do you have an anticipated square footage of that? No, they haven't designed it. But when they say small, because of the setbacks there and the easements, you know, that, that um, yeah, it's uh, a pretty big footprint. Available areas that reduce yeah, substantially. Right. right. It would be able to be larger. Right. Without the, if the easement. All right. Any other questions of the board? All right. Let's open it up to the audience. Mr. Hayes, Attorney Hayes. Good evening. Uh, Michael Hayes. Uh, and I represent uh, two of the abutters, the Flannery's and the Me Shows. They live directly across the street. And uh, I want to ask me to make it perfectly clear that uh, they are completely in favor of uh, the Whitney's and anybody else in town doing whatever the bylaw permits, and they support that. Uh, but I've gone over the plans and, and I've discussed this with Bill as well. Uh, and I do have uh, two, just two questions really for the board. And the first is um, whether you need to make a determination that the uh, area encompassed in those easements uh, can be calculated for the gross area. Uh, and the reason I ask that is that those are access easements to the uh, westerly, the house to the west of the, of the locust. And those easements uh, were uh, the easements for ingress and egress and for all purposes of which uh, uh, roads are commonly used in the town of Situ. So I would respectfully suggest that the board needs to determine whether that square footage uh, can be used in, in lot area calculations. And, and I'll, Bill, I, I've discussed this with Bill, and right. I can answer that whenever. And, and Bill, he's got, he has an answer to that, but then I have another question. Okay, so we'll go to the answer. Yeah, I asked Paul first two things. On the, respectfully disagree with Mike. Uh, this is not a paper street. These are these are private easements. But even assuming for a moment 
that was the case, the area of the access easement that is on lot B, which isn't the subject to this, is approximately 300 square feet, and we have 20,900 square feet, and 10,000 is required in the zone. And the area on uh, lot, a, lot A here, or which is on parcel six behind it, lot A, is a few thousand square feet, but we have 36,000 square feet. Yeah. If we lost 26,000 square feet, it still works. That was actually going to be my question. If you, if you assume, and, and I don't know whether, not, I mean, it's an interesting question. I hadn't considered it. But if you assume Mike is right, yeah. if my question was subtract it, and what do we have? We got so no you subtract it, and we have still, still more than yeah. double the effort. Yeah. You still got a ton. Yeah. If I can follow up on that, this, this is the land court plan that was issued January 14th of this year. The uh, petitioner's plan was done in September of 2000. <laughs> What, what it shows is the uh, property here. This is the Whitney lot. This is the existing house. That's the subject of the application. And this is the White House. This this was owned by one owner. And the estate divided to uh, divide the property up. And what they did for this subdivision plan essentially was to put this line down here, down here, and, and put this parcel six for this property and this the land went with the White House. And if you look at this plan, this is 2002. It was recorded in 2014, January this year. This plan shows this area right here. <coughs> parcel six. It shows that as an easement. It's not a way. This plan, this plan here, she calls it a 12-foot way. But what Billy's explaining to you is, is that normally ways are created in a subdivision control law, and this is not a way, it's an easement shown on the land board plan. And this, this portion, which is called the 12-foot way, goes with the O'Brien property. The whites use it, but on the parcel in question here, it's clearly an easement shown on the land board plan. It was also shown on the land court uh, petitioner's plan. But the end result is even if you just again if we, right, subtracted all of way, that. We have more than enough here. Right. Okay. This, yeah. Yeah, this parcel six and A has thirty six thousand square feet and we need twenty thousand. Neil. Yeah, the um the bylaw basically says that um where are you at in the bylaw? I'm at uh six ten one A. That's where I just saw it. 610-1A, okay. Um, no direction and uh, not having exclusive any, yeah, exclusive of any part of said lot within the line of a street or way. Then our definition of a street away is any street away providing legally sufficient funding for a division of land under the requirements of General Laws Chapter 41, Section 81L. <coughs> In other words, no one could use those ways for frontage, therefore they're not ways that are regulated and under the dimensional. Okay. Prohib uh, section. Today's next point. Well, uh, just, and again, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with anything Julie O'Neill or Paul says, but at the same time, I would have a concern that uh, the, uh, I guess it's the white property, since they have the benefit of that easement, uh, could they go to the planning board with a plan and ask to build a road? And would that affect? This, this proposal? Well, the only thing I'm going to say is I can't, I'm not going to speculate on that because they haven't done that. And when they go do that, I guess everybody will find out what the answer to that question is. Okay. Fine. My second point is this, and again, the Flanders are trying to stop this project. Uh, but they do have a concern, and their concern is what happens down the road uh, while uh, lot uh, one. Uh, combined with lot seven, uh, which is for a single family. And Wait a minute, a, lot, a, well, let's, uh, let's talk about lot A or lot B? The existing house. And okay, so that's lot A. And and lot A and yep. lot uh, six. Six. Parcel six. Okay. Uh, and while that, the bylaw would not permit a duplex, uh, it's, it's uh, for uh, two condo units, uh, there's nothing to prevent an accessory dwelling from being built. And there would also nothing prevent uh, the other 
lot that's already approved with the planning board to have an accessory dwelling. So there is conceivably the possibility that there could be four structures on these two lots. Granted, that would be a special permit. Granted, it's probably it's not it's, uh, very easy, but it but it is a it's a concern that uh, the Flannerys and the Michos have, and I've discussed this with Bill also. And uh, 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 again, this being a special permit, uh, it would be up to the board to to make any conditions uh, that they thought would be beneficial to the neighborhood. Uh, so that is that is. The, that is the other concern uh, of the Michos and the. <coughs> uh, the only thing with re due respect with Mike is uh, under our bylaw, it sets out, first of all, saying about this, about this lot of land, we said about any lot of land in the town of Situate. And so there's, there's nothing unique about that. And that's why the planning board is a special permit granting authority on that, which has its own set of rules and regulations and whatever. And, and I just, you know, our opinion is I think it would be unfair for one special grant permit granting authority to usurp the role of another special grant permit granting authority. Oh. <coughs> can we even do that? I'm not sure we can. I don't think you can. We I'm have. not sure we can. I don't think yeah. you can. Yeah. Unless, you're, unless, you're, uh, unless your client wants to get that right up at this point. Well, I mean, there are provisions in the bylaw where the, the board, board of appeals can uh, impose conditions on special permits. Uh, absolutely, I don't disagree with you, but I'm not sure if this is the type that we can. Well, it's a, I, I, I think you can do just about anything you want. The question right. is, do you want to, and is it appropriate? Well, certainly. Just with, with all due respect, with Mike said, yes, you you can condition these things, but uh, I don't think from a well from a you know, just from an equity standpoint, you have one special grant permit granting authority usurping the role of another special permit granting authority. That was one of the reasons why, with the, with the recodification of the zoning bylaw in 2010, was actually to, to look at some of these provisions where there appeared to be some conflicting provisions between planning board and zoning board of appeals, and also the changing of the special permit granting authority, for instance, the zoning board of appeals in the case of. Uh, floodplain and watershed protection areas just to try to get some consistency here. I'm all set. Anyone else, please? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. My name is Walter Sullivan. I'm an attorney representing uh, two of the most corrupt butters, um, the whites who live at 181 and the Fox Road, and the O'Briens who live at 185. And we had submitted a letter in opposition prior to as well. Um, Chiefly, our concern is that by creating this, this parcel, they're making the pre-existing structure more not conforming. And contrary to um, Section E50 of your bylaw, it's, it's more direct detrimental to the neighborhood. While there is precedent with this board on 50-foot lots under this section of the bylaw, on, uh, which Bill alluded to, in both of those situations on Border Street and Surfside, the, the lot that was left was conforming in all respects to your zoning. Here, this lot now is more substantially more not performing because the executive structure is now only eight feet from the abutting property. So it's it's more detrimental to the neighborhood, it's harmful, and and for that reason we would submit that the board should deny it and find um, under the second section that they seek relief from under the bylaw to deny. With respect to the parcel that they are combining with lot parcel six, my client has lived here since two thousand. And he had been adamant that part of the city was wetland. Um, but we noticed on the plan that Mr. Mirabito certified that that was not the case. Um, today, my client reached out to an engineer at Millbrook Survey who indicated that they had flagged it in 2000 that there are wetlands um, encumbering a significant part of that parcel. And they sent over us, to us today a recorded land court plan that shows it as wetlands. Um, it was done by uh, Forsley and Whitney and Millbrook Survey. This was only hinted to me about 20 minutes uh, ago. Mr. Ormberg hasn't had a moment to see it, but I have five copies of the plan. Okay. Um, our, our client submits that you cannot use wetlands to combine the front of this lot. Um, and that shouldn't be, that's not permissible under the bylaw. Let's take a look at the plan.
Sullivan, you said that it, your client, um, Mr. White, yes. was was this prior to or in conjunction with the his uh, being informed that it was wetlands um, to his uh, deeding the parcel that was described as parcel six? So, so if you look at that plan there, you'll see where the flagging was on the before the block was split. So the flagging goes from our current parcel across what is being called now parcel six, which I think is actually called parcel B in that plan there. Yes. The yep. Also, there's a note there that says parcel B shall be not buildable. When it gets combined, it's B and C, which are the two uh, registered pieces of land that are go to low water, and then D. So you'll, I think it's so five. I don't have it in front of me. Part, parcels B, C, and D, as shown, are not buildable. Parcel B is to be combined with parcel A. Parcel C to be combined with C. D. I don't mean to jump in, but this. The plan's not signed or sealed. I, I, I do have the stamp line on that kind of stuff, so I, I apologize for that. I can throw it to you on my spot. We're kind of looking at it. Yeah, we're looking at something that's 14 years old. Well, can, can, I, can, I answer, can I answer one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just two questions, just to address Walter's first thing about I don't understand it, the dwelling on parcel A meets all the town's existing dimensional zoning setback requirements. So to say that you're making it more non-conforming simply is a proof. Unless you can point out to me how that dwelling is not meeting the existing requirements of the bylaw, because it does. That's question number one. Well, Look. What we did. Yeah, yeah, those, those, those things are pre-existing non-conforming. Okay, not drawing any line near no, them, no, so just, just to clarify. We, we can show you the stamp copy. Oh, can we stick with, if we could, uh, a few chair? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to stick with that issue to clarify <coughs> that one first. All right, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I was, I was going to raise that question myself. The existing dwelling. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, Attorney Sullivan, you're not suggesting the existing dwelling is non-conforming in as it's too close to lot lines, but the existing structure as shown on the plan and existing garage barn as shown on the plan. That's correct. I, are I apologize if I misstated. That's correct. I'm saying that by taking the parcel away, you're intensifying the non-conformities of the structures on the plan. Oh, but they would have, the, and we have in the situations where we have done this sort of thing would require that um, structures that are too close to lot lines or in some cases actually um, crossing lot lines right. be removed as part of the condition of doing it so um, but but the only point I'd make there is again that there's an intensification of that use there is an intensification of that use it's exactly that lot line the the area where it is a pre-existing non-conforming use is not being at all yeah you're not changing it no not even changing and, and Paul would like to speak to the I, I think I think this thing even putting aside the fact that it isn't signed and sealed we're, I think that you're misinterpreting what that says and I think Paul will pull that. This one? yeah this, this subdivision for the land court to switch one parcel to the next, the 
the wetlands do clearly run through what at that point in time was called Council Key. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm having a little hard time. I don't read maps. Oh. But so what we so the existing dwelling that's marked 179. That's 179. Right. And it looks right in front of it, headed towards the beach. It's flagged wetlands. Between here. Right. That this is a wetland. All right, so how what are we going to yeah. yeah. One of these is wrong, right? Well, if they were wetlands at one time, they don't, wetlands don't usually go away unless they're, mm -hmm. unless they're manipulation. This plan right here. Paul. Here's 179, Paul, right. and this, this is 179. This is the same plan. Mm -hmm. And what you see, this is what they call the petitioner's plan. This is the sign on the signing board. This is the same plan. You see the land board took it in in February of 01. Land board endorsed it on September 21st. And it 2000. shows the wetlands. It shows wetlands right, right there. It shows wetlands. Right this here. Is this is 14 years ago. What I'm saying when, is... Are you suggesting the wetlands went away? I don't know what happened to them. I didn't, I, I didn't do the slagging. I understand. But when we were out there last fall, there's planters in there, which should be shown one of the plants. There's, there's planter islands in here, and it was all on up to the travels at the beach. So I, I, I did see this plan. And I had Brad Holmes come out. He did some soil test pits, and he verified that this was up. There. And where's where's that, the results of that? Is that in front of us? What's that? His report. Only no. in the, only in, the, no, in no, as much no, as Mr. No, Burbio's plan. I, I had him do that was because I had to determine whether it was wetland or upland because your zoning bylaw requires you to separate wetland from upland. So he, he went out and walked the site and. I was there with him, he did several test pits, and he determined there was no wetland on parcel 6. Well, we have something that happened today, a little issue on wetlands. Um, I'm having a hard time with this one because you, you, you know, I mean, I find you, uh, you know me, I absolutely think you're the most, you know, great integrity, but if you're asking this board, we're looking at maps that, I mean, even in this one, it shows that they're wetlands, and you say this is a land court file, and you're saying that your guy said that there was no wetlands, but yet we don't, I, I mean, I would like to see something from him. Why is he not here? Because no one raised the issue until Well, until it's raised so, now, I guess, yeah. You didn't need to be here? Yeah. I, I think you might need to be here. When I started the project, yeah, I, I had this plan because we surveyed the property a couple of years ago, and then when we decided to file the zoning board, I just see the wetlands here, and I said, "This is all one. You need to come out and check this and see if there's wetlands down there." Okay, right. uh, could I ask one question? Sure. Paul, just to clarify so we know, as a as a registered surveyor, mm -hmm. you're a qualified soils expert, yeah. aren't you? Right. And you stamp the plan and you certify it, correct? And I we stamped it, we surveyed it, and certified it as being up. Right, and that's statutory. I, I know, but we also have a stamp plan that says it's wetlands. So I'm 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 not able I personally am not able to resolve it, you know, looking at it. Um well, was that on the PDF you're talking about that someone We have about? another one yes. here in front. <laughs> the one that Mr. Maravito just gave it is that's stamped by everyone. Yeah. We and can also provide the original report that was okay. done when the land was done. Okay, first of all, I'm sorry, I'm Mr. White. It's just, you know, we got to keep order. So um, you can see where we're headed. So um, give us a minute here. Um, Neil, do you have any comment on, on where we're well, headed here? Well, just drawing from my experience as the acting conservation agent oh, for um, Herringbrook Meadow, um, there are certain statute of limitations on, you know, things that on, on wetlands violations okay so I don't know what the situation is here but you know if there's upland there presently and it's beyond the statute of limitations I mean I don't know what the board Which is this what do I don't that. know what the statute of limitation is on on destruction of wetlands I think I know I'd rather not testify to what it is until I okay. uh, yeah, get some firm um, facts all right. It's, it goes to a, it, it when a, to a subsequent owner. I, I think there's a certain period of time. For, uh, under the, on the order of conditions under the Wetlands Protection Act, 
is a three there's a three year statute of limitations. Yeah, that, that's my recollection. Okay. Um, well, I see it's something that uh, I, I, I personally am not prepared to resolve this particular issue tonight. Um, do the other board members feel differently? I mean, I, would, I think I would yeah, like I to see something sure. more developed on that. Sure. If uh, you look at that upper wetland line right here. You're, you're pointing no, to? It's right here. See wetland? Flag three yeah. on, on the land court file. Uh, this yep. is upward from here right down to this line yes this register land yes this area in here is about eight thousand square feet on the plan you have here for parcel a parcel a so what you need is one thousand one hundred square feet more upland to make that a twenty thousand square foot lot and you can see from here between here and here, even if you were, <coughs> you've got about 8,000 square well, feet, so you're still way over 20,000 square feet of upland. This is also upland down here. Yeah. Just, that's that's right. what that's the wetland area. Okay. The top of the bank. So but, but also the parcel of those two, you cut out of it this way, so it's even. Smaller. It is small, so but I mean, just a question. The wetland. It, it would seem to me it's just a question of. Is there enough land here? And if there's two pieces of evidence before us that one shows as wetlands, one shows as not, and, and I recognize that you're qualified and licensed to certify, and that you've had a consultant come in and look at it, but I know just out of the blue, we've got uh, some additional evidence well, before us. It just needs to be resolved so we know what we're talking well, about. The only thing we say in that is even <coughs> assuming for a minute, we're 100% wrong, which we're not. Is still more than 8,000 square feet more of upland than what is necessary for this petition. I guess I would rather have, you know, rather rather than be estimated. I know Paul can measure this stuff and come back with, you know, calculations. Um, you know, I mean, I think to be fair, I, I, I want to make I want to make the right call on this one, but um, well, I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm ready to make the call on this one. It's it's stuff that we've, you know, we've just been handed. You've just been handed. Um, we've got somebody saying wetlands uh, and somebody saying no wetlands. Um, this says the wetlands were there in 2001. Um, it's 2014. I don't, I don't know. I mean, if there's a three-year statute of limitations, would anybody would testify how long it existed as a lawn? I don't know. Oh, well, let me let me ask the question. So we have we have. A licensed wetland scientist that certified this. So, assuming that we come back here and he certifies this, and and someone else certifies something different, what do you do? We already have the certification. Oh. Well, we're going to have to make a decision because they can't both be right, I suppose, right? <coughs> one, of them, one of them. I mean, even they say they say totally opposite things. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to make a decision on which one we believe. Well, the other thing now we have in front of us, the more recent plan was certified as uplands. This other plan being... Yeah. So you're suggesting if there was another expert that oh, disagreed yeah. with the current interpretation of the well, problem. Well, what, I'm, what I'm just saying is you throw them, the potentially, not intentionally, so throw them into an endless loop there's no way out of. I said, well, I guess what would come into play then is a plan that would show that you had enough area, even excluding the wetlands, would be very helpful in that situation. But I think what they're saying now, there are no wetlands as it stands now. Right. Whether, so there's no nothing to prove so, otherwise. Right. It's, we, we, can, well, we can avoid the issue, though, if there's... If, if, the we dispute, have a, if the disputed area of wetlands is not enough to reduce the lot size, well, it's, right. yeah, that's, that's, well, that avoids the if whole we can thing. See, if we can see that plan, I think, you know, acknowledging that you're not oh. conceding that these areas are actually wetlands, that would certainly be helpful, wouldn't it? Yeah. There's, there's two issues. One thing I'd throw for the board's consideration is why is the condition in the plan uh, a condition in the approval that, that Neil cannot issue a building permit on this unless unless the sewer pipe is 20, 000, at least 20,000 square feet of upland. The only reason I say that is I'm, I'm on the reason why we're here tonight. I'm, a, I'm away. I'm, a, I'm out of the country next time. I won't be back here till the end of May. 
I mean, for the next board decision. So that's the only, I don't mean to be recalcitrant well, recalcitrant he, does, he actually does okay when you're not here. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is as far as a condition, as far as a condition goes, if, yeah. if that's the only issue, I, I think from looking at the plan there, it's, it's well, whatever. I, I think it's abundantly clear. This isn't like it's off. It's it's eight thousand square feet over minimally, even oh, assuming that everyone's. Right. But I, I, I grant, I, What's I grant what you're saying on the lot parcel that is before it's us. No, no, it's just. But if the is right here. If they question that comes into okay. about the lot that's before us, Flag. even though you may be able to um, overcome that objection on lot A. Lot B and Parcel 7 together, what portion of, if there is a portion of Parcel 7 that can be identified as wetlands, um, then does Lot B plus 7 meet the requirements necessary for its creation? Yeah, but on the other hand, Ed, is that's not the subject to this, and if it doesn't meet it, then that's an unbuildable lot. I understand that. Right. Which and, is, but which that is may. I understand that, but that also may put your client in a situation of wishing to attack this in a different way. I, again, this is <coughs> new evidence, and and, and I'm not Understood. challenging. I, I no, understand that. I just would think it would seem to it would seem to be to your advantage right. that we clarify it, even if we identify it as disputed in our testimony, and take that portion of the land out of the equation for discussion, without conceding it to be wetlands. Understood, and I appreciate the board's concern. I guess, and we'll, we'll accede to the board's wishes, just with a little chagrin that we've, myself, been in ongoing conversations over the past few days, and to be told that, oh, by the way, five minutes ago we discovered this. If, if anyone had told us an hour ago, Paul could address this adequately, so it, it appears to me it's uh, more than a coincidence. Well, trust, trust me, I'm, I'm never, pleased with having, uh, being surprised. I'm always comfortable when a right. hearing comes before us and all parties involved have had a chance to communicate and discuss their issues as it sounded like that you and Mr. Yes. You and Attorney Hayes had talked about his concerns and you each had, an, uh, but sometimes things do come up at the last minute. And okay, so can, can I ask a question of the board? Uh, can we can we proceed and finish the rest of the testimony? <coughs> and because from, a, from the board stand, because I'm the one that's conversing with this, and limit the scope of discussion for the next hearing to this weapons issue. Well, I personally would be happy to do that. I, I, what's, you know. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> I don't know if that sounds good. Okay. And then, and then there are there any other questions, at least. Yes. Right, the right. So we could put this exactly. issue aside. Exactly. <coughs> know what you need to do. The. Uh, you know the objectors uh, need know what they need to do, and um, and our concern would be that 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 you're able to identify that there is sufficient upland in both A and B. I would like to say that you don't want us to take action and then have your client in the position of not being able to further subdivide the land. Yeah. Under B, we only need 10,000 square feet. That's 20,000. Okay. <coughs> they, don't, they don't even need seven. Right, because it's not a foot to foot. Exactly. Okay. okay. Mr. Sullivan, do you need this back? No, we can see that. Okay. We do need his phone back, though. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 I, I like that incident at the other. The phone? Yeah. <laughs> Is it a recent iPhone? <laughs> and did we all yeah. get one? Yeah, I think that it'd be great to get the sign. Copy of that. Sarah, can I just read this is the same thing you had. Okay. This is dated 2006 with a revision date of 07, okay. seven years ago. Okay. These pictures were taken last fall. I know it. I have walked down it many days. times. This is the area that they're talking yeah. about. In this area here, it yeah. shows a wetland. You can see it's 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 all lawn in this area. Yeah. And I'm, I'm talking on a white property. Okay. And just so the audience understands what we're doing, uh, you've been listening to the sort of discussion regarding wetlands versus uplands. Um, that particular issue is getting put on hold <coughs> until the next meeting. You're going to let Mr. DeLisi handle it? Maybe we like him better. He's probably a much more eloquent individual than myself. <laughs> he does all right. 
Um, so <coughs> we, what we'd like to do, though, is finish other, you know, testimony and information about the property and other objections. Um, but again, next time when we come, the only issue that we'll be talking about is the wetlands issue, wetlands versus uplands. Yes, ma'am. The author of the letter that you received from the First Coast Association? Yes. And perhaps you could probably clarify a few things, not only for you, but for also other members here. Um, my understanding that the first book is in an, uh, an R3, 100 square foot, 100 feet across, and a 10,000 square foot area. And then you have the section where you can come in and ask for a special permit for 50 feet, right? Correct. My confusion is, is that under the 50 foot provision, and this is what I'm bringing from, from this discussion, that the board automatically, when the language says, shall be permissible, that if you come in and you <coughs> satisfy certain conditions under that statute, the board will automatically grant it, even though it's a deviation from the 100 foot of the 10,000 square feet, and even if it does have a negative effect on the neighborhood, in the sense that one of our main concerns is that this is a precedent that other people don't come in and do the same thing and start breaking up lots, and there's already a property there. This isn't a case where there's, um, and they're trying to divide it and make it smaller. They have 150 feet lots already. So, I would think that that would still be a concern of the zoning board, regardless of whether a petitioner comes in and satisfies all other elements. Am I wrong? Yes. <laughs> there you go. Okay. We still have to decide that um, it is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. There is, it, it is still discretionary. Um, I guess I would say, very, you know, probably more often than not, they get granted, but we take everything into consideration um, when we are granting these ap applications. And, and which is why I assume you guys are here to, you know, other people are here to talk about the effect of the neighborhood. Um, that is something that we will take into consideration and we want to hear from you on. So if you have something to say about that, who, you know, something. Can I make a comment? Yes. The 50-foot frontage um, <coughs> bylaw was put in place for a very good reason. Um, a lot of properties um, were large with frontage on the street, um, but not sufficient frontage for a second house on the street, but a lot of back land. And it allowed for people to commit unusually large portions of land, double the lot size, to the building of another home um, without having to take down existing houses without having to subject their land to subdivision control without allowing for development without as dense development as is possible under subdivision control uh, sometimes by granting a 50-foot frontage lot we may take a parcel of land that might have three four five dwellings on it and commit it to only two in perpetuity that it's a good that's part of the reason why it says it can't be further subdivided mm -hmm. so right. in this case um, I don't I'm not an engineer and there's not a huge amount of land here but taking down the existing structure we already saw the possibility of a cul-de-sac and getting 60 foot frontage on a on a the curve um, it's possible that maybe there'd be a way to get three houses in here or two duplexes or something else so this is really a low density option it's not that there's no other option. This is a simple low density option. So in, to some degree, 50 foot frontage can be very um, positive for a neighborhood. It's not necessarily a negative idea. Yes, it does allow for some development, but there's development potential here outside of a 50 foot frontage um, proposal. And, and this, just to add on to that, this would lock out the future development that is possible now once they commit to this plan there's, there's not going to be you can't build a condominium back there you can't further subdivide the lot so but, that, but that's just for that piece of property that right. doesn't that sets a precedent for right. anyone else up on first cliff who has land that can be divided that way and therefore it would make it more and more dense and you're already at 
the most dense. The, the 10,000 square feet is the most dense in situ, am I right? Is that right? It's a, we're an A3, no, so A1 not. and A2. The requirements are much we have, bigger. We have a lot of houses at 5,000 square we have, feet. We have pre, right. pre existing well, 5,000 yeah, square feet. Well, those are pre existing, but I'm right. just saying. But yeah, they're, they're large, large areas of For a brand new dwelling, R3 is the lowest we're density, we're density the lowest amount of dimensional right. area. So for mm -hmm. a brand new building, the, the least it can be is 10,000 square feet. Right. But these but, are but going again, to be 36 and 20 some. Also, your concern about other properties on First Cliff, and I'm, I'm guessing Mr. Maravito is getting up to show us this. You have to have 150 foot on away to to be able to carve out the 100 foot parcel and a 50 foot parcel. Uh, I'm not sure that there's a lot of houses, a lot of properties on First Cliff that have 150 foot on away. Um, I, I, without analyzing it, I don't know, but. Um, and then they have to, and then in addition to that, they have to have three times the building because the, the 50 foot frontage has to have twice the lot area. So you have to have the potential for three building lots and 150 foot on away in order to do this. As, as a matter of fact, for the next meeting, Paul will look at how many 30,000 square foot upland lots are above with 150 feet of frontage there are in First Cliff. I would I, I, I guess is very few. Yeah, I'll, uh, I think you got because even Mr. Even Mr. White, who was a large lot here, has zero frontage, so his his lot doesn't even qualify. I'm I'm guessing. You don't have any. Given I'm guessing the Michaud zero. property may, but it yeah. but zero. it's. You can tell by looking at the map. I've done a lot of work on the cliff in 40 years, and you tell you there's nothing up there I'm aware of that has 150 feet of frontage and 30,000 square feet of up one. Roberts Drive and Sunset Road, or these subdivisions aren't that old. This is Sunset Road with 10,000 square foot lots off of it. Roberts Drive is the same. Um, we got Conroy Terrace, there's one here at 41,000 square feet. That, I mean, he's got, um, so he's got more than 100 feet of frontage there. But if you look at the rest of the lots, this is the offer property. They only got 25 feet of frontage here. They got plenty of land here. But all, all, <coughs> all these other lots are all maxed out. I know this is a, a two family dwelling here that was recently built. That's a single family, single family. These lots are 20,000, 15,000 square feet. These two lots combined, if you, if you take into account the entire property they own, there's a total of, uh, a total of 56,000 square feet, 600 square feet. So if you're going to build 10,000 square foot lots, I'd have to lay them out, but I've got 50,000 square feet to play with, 10,000 square feet, you'd have a land area for five houses, but it doesn't mean you could get five, but the land area is there. You have to take what, take land for the way to And again, when Mrs. Yeah. Wood purchased this property, she's been taxed as a single family home lot. Does that help? Yes. Sir. Um, I guess my question would be is that. If, if oh, no, you. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Justin Mueller. I live at 169 um, Edward Foster Road. Um, I guess my concern is, is that this is ultimately tied to the wetlands question. If the board is using its uh, prerogative to divide this now and, and alleviate the fact that it may become um, multi own properties or more than, more than two that are being proposed as a way to eliminate congestion uh, versus increase it. If that all that land that we were talking about, which I didn't, I wasn't able to see all the lines and where they are, but if that is in fact wetland, <coughs> then that really is not part of 56,000 square feet that we're talking about. I'm, I guess I'm not sure. I, I don't think I understand your question. Okay. My question is, is that this is, is this tied to the wetlands question? If the board no, is no. going to grant this as a way to alleviate congestion rather than the potential of increasing it, um, if it were to be broken into five lots because it's 50,000 square feet, if that's more than half of its wetlands, then it's not 56,000. <coughs> Well, it still is. It's just that there is a certain percentage of wetlands. It's still that, well, but it's not all uplands. It's if not identified as wetlands right now before right. us. That's in question. But even if it were identified 
um, to the extent that the other plan that we were shown from 2001, there would still be sufficient uplands here to perhaps get three house lots out of. I mean, it, again, it's as Mr. Marabito was saying, even though you have 5,000, uh, 50,000 square feet, you can't get five lots out of it because you have to take some to get right away to uh, get away to get to those to have access in front edge and other things. So um, I, I don't think you'd be hard pressed to get more than three, I think, under any circumstances, but I don't know. I mean, it's some, there's all sorts of creative ways to do it. There's common drives, there's other things like that. So um, I, I, this is a low density development option, n no matter how you cut it. Anyone else? <coughs> Okay. Um, move to continue. Yeah, I was just going to walk very quickly through the 950.3 if we if we are just to put it on the record just in case because next time I think we're going to constrain this to a discussion of wetlands issues. Okay. Right. And uh, the, under the special permit criteria, you have to comply with 950.3, and I, I feel we, uh, all these we do comply with. Uh, a specific size appropriate location for the use of structure. I think it's a, it's a low density use of this property and by having a 50 foot lot it ensures <coughs> in perpetuity it would be a single family home and as Mr. Tibbetts pointed out it couldn't be further divided uh, to prevent any other development. Uh, the use of development adversely affect the neighborhood. Uh, again we're talking one house on what is probably the largest developable parcel on uh, on first cliff, so it's not multiple homes that are being suggested. There's no undue uh, nuisance or serious uh, hazard of vehicles, pedestrians, as a result of the proposed use of structure. Uh, same reason, a single family home. Uh, adequate and appropriate facilities provided to assure proper operation of the proposed use and structure. My client's already paying two sewer betterments, already playing the town of situate for two buildable lots. And uh, there isn't any significant impact on any uh, public water supply. And again, it's going to be serviced by municipal water, but it's a single, single, fam single family, existing single family home that already is serviced by water. And that's, and that's it. All right. Paul. Could you say one thing for the uh, benefit of the uh, people in the audience? Lot A, as we mentioned, has to be issued by the uh, zoning board would approve this under a special permit. And part of the special permit requirements of the zoning bylaw says, and there's a note on the plan, it says lot A is to be approved by the Board of Appeals for pursuant to section 6102B of the Situate Zoning Bylaw. Said lot may not be further subdivided and a deed restriction for, for this requirement shall be recorded in the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds accordingly. What that means is when they record the special permit, there's a, a deed restriction that says this area in blue can never be uh, subdivided. You can't take land away from it. What that does, it forces this lot to stay exactly the way it is. And it's and again, the, you can only have a single family house on a lot that's at least twice the size of what's required in the rest of the neighborhood. So it's, um, uh, Mr. Tibbetts said this is a fairly uh, low density project compared to what could be. <coughs> All right, so continue. Do you want to just make clear of what we're asking? Of yes. You? Yeah. Next week, then we're, or next. Will we not, we will not, ex will we not uh, have discussion about other matters? Correct. So anyone who here wants to speak to other matters should speak now. Right, and I ask that. So, so the next the next meeting will be dealing with the wetlands issues only. I would ask that any objections and any maps and even from the applicant. Right. Try to get us everything a week in a, you know, yeah. at least five days in advance. Um, this is a little bit different Usually and it and, and it, it may take us a little bit longer to, right. you know, digest it. So uh, as much time as we can get in advance is really Absolutely. very much appreciated. Could I ask the board's indulgence for a minute? Sue would just like to make a statement on behalf of Ryan since we're not going to be addressing that next week. I have to read it because I'm nervous. Oh, don't be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm here to represent my son Ryan who's sorry he couldn't be here tonight. His work takes him out of state for most of the year so he has asked me to say a few words about his ownership of 179 Edward Foster Road and our intentions as a family going forward. Ryan grew up in Situate. 
Our family has lived here for 30 years. We love, we appreciate, value the natural beauty and historical charm of our town and First Cliff in particular. When Ryan decided to purchase the property, it was because he fell in love with the lawns and the gardens and he envisioned raising his family there someday. We understand that Ryan's property is unique and that is one of the largest lots on the cliff. We are very sensitive to the fact that its size and history make it important to the neighborhood. We would like everyone to know that preserving the integrity and charm of 179 Edward Foster Road is a priority for us. Since purchasing it in 2008, we have demonstrated this priority by carefully maintaining the house, the barn, the extensive lawns, and beautiful gardens at, the, at great expense and to the benefit of all. We have taken much time and given careful thought and consideration as to the best way to make improvements to the property we will meet, that will meet our family's needs while preserving the character of the cliff. We believe our application represents the most appropriate use of the land, and if approved, each lot will be larger than most of the properties that exist in the neighborhood today. As for the future, it's my husband's and my intention to design a retirement home that will fit in with the character and charm of the other lovely homes in the area and retain as much space, light, and tranquility as possible. In all the years we've lived in Situate, we've demonstrated ourselves to be responsible property owners and considerate neighbors. We believe our home would not create an undue nuisance, be a hazard, or attract crowds, nor adversely affect the neighborhood in any way. We also feel, if our plans are denied, that it is unlikely that any future owners of 179 Edward Foster Road would be as conservative in their development plans or be as sensitive to the importance of maintaining the character of the cliff. Thank you. You're welcome. Well said. Thank you. Sir. Yes, I'm Sean Flannery. Um, we own the properties at 180 Edward Foster Road and 178 Edward Foster Road. My question to the board is, um, we've heard some representations about uh, modest size, home being built in a lot or whatever, but my question to you is, what are there, are there any representations or any limitations other than, than the standard ones that go along with these lots at this time? Um, I asked the question if they, if they, and they said they have not designed the house. So, so. so does that then mean that, that, that I would assume that means that, that they could build to the maximum permitted under, under the law, right? Yes. So there's nothing that would bind them to the representations tonight? No. Okay. And difficult for us to do anything that way because the property that we're creating by our action already has the building on it. Um, the property that the new structure we built on is a conforming lot. That was created by the planning board. And, and as a conforming lot, has the rights that anyone would have in a lot. It, it, it's a little restricted because of the easements on it, but it's still a conforming lot. Hi, Tim White, 181 Road. So to echo Attorney Hayes' original statement, it is not our intention to appeal upon somebody's right to, to use their land. We have a lot of land there. We prefer to use it ourselves. We do get concerned when we see inconsistencies on documents, right? And so I know that you're going to address that at next week's meeting, right? Not next week. Uh, ne next, next month. Next scheduled meeting. But you know, it is a beautiful piece of property. It does have a lot of effect. It does have a lot of access to the water. And so going forward, we would like to see the potential inconsistencies cleaned up, solidified, and you know, mapped out once correctly, and then there we go. We would too, so appreciate that. What are you, Mama? You good? Yeah. Okay. Someone in the back? Yes, sir. Alan McLeod, Love Circuit Avenue. Hi. And I have a question from the end of the engineer through the chair. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering what the distance from the back line of the new line to the front of the existing house is. Do you know what he's asking, Paul? I could hear the question. The hood, he's, he wants to know from the from um, the rear from setback. The rear, no, from the division, I think, of parcel six and parcel A, to the um, to the house on uh, one seventy nine. This, parcel. I think, this is what he's wanting to know. Parcel about. B, the, the rear line of parcel B. How far is the house from the oh, is that lot what he B wants? between B and A? I'm, not sure. I'm sorry, sir. Are you are you asking for this measurement or this I measurement? The, the easterly line. Yes, I can't see the uh, 
So that one there, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, I misunderstood. <coughs> Yes. It's hard to see the blue. It's hard to see from there, but there is a line, a dotted line, written drawn inside. That's the setback line. That's the angle setback. It's about 12 feet off the property line. We show the setback lines on this plan. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So we have the and the setback for a, cons a home to be constructed on lot A is 20 feet because it's a rear line, correct? Correct. So it, the new home will be 20 feet from that line. Mm -hmm. The existing home is 12 feet from that line and has to be at least eight. So there'd be 28 feet between the so two homes. So at least 32 feet. So the 30 foot setback for the front line is not applicable yes. in that case? It is, in the, it is at the road. If the house on B was built on the setback <coughs> line, it'd be 32 feet from the porch. Uh, if uh, you had a house side by side here, they would only have to be 16 feet apart. So this house is more than twice what the size is. I could probably address that. Okay. I, I think there's a lot of, you know, we get the question all the time. Uh, is that a front yard? Well, the setback is not from your front yard. The setback is from the street. That's it. If it's not a, it's it's not doesn't say front yard. It says rear yard, side yard, street. Street. <coughs> Thank you. All right. So what's the uh, what's the date of the next meeting? Do we have to? Okay. We just vote on it. Yeah, vote on it. Okay. Sure. Motion to continue. Can we have one of those little papers? Didn't I give you? I'm up. Okay. Uh, oh no, waiver request. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. All right. I'll do what I'll do. I'll send you the one. Okay, great. <coughs> okay, so um, do I hear motion to continue the hearing? Motion to continue the application from 179 Edward Foster Road for the purpose of reconsidering wetland issues only to April, what was it, 17th? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your vacation. <laughs> he, he's got about a two minute vacation here. He'll be back. He'll be back. What's that ticking? Okay. Oh, oh, I wasn't expecting sure two, expect two plans that disagreed with each other that no, much. No, 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 I know. Some people don't. Yeah, but some people don't yeah, accept those plans. Yeah. 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 Some boys won't accept this. Okay. Because they had to print them up. I think yeah. time. So they printed up before. No, no. Business open today, wherever you get it printed. So that's, that's why I have a little. Okay. 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 Oh, I'll, I'll take a copy of that. 610.2 allows you to have a stretch, uh, create a lot. To do that? Yeah. I, I don't agree. I think it's a good thing. I think we did it. <laughs> we didn't make a mistake. Yeah. That's right, that's April. But that's something for someone to contest our oh, decision. Right. My, my kids are still too young. Yeah. Ed's on vacation. Next week? No, it's, um, I oh. just checked. Oh, is it the week before? The vacation's the next week. Oh, okay. Huh? Do you actually go places every time? Uh, I haven't had I have to have the potential to because I have a wife and children. <laughs> what does that matter? If my wife says we're going and the children are... And then they Well, now it's both of ours. You 
took notes here. The check marks are mine. No problem. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. No, not at all. I'll take down this whole wall here. Yeah, this one Yep. Three. All right. Moving along. Next. Next one. Right, yeah. What's next? Schedule that. Introduce yourself for us. Uh, Paul Cuxtis, 97th Hour, my wife Sheila. And why don't you explain to us what your application is all about? Uh, we, uh, we, we bought the building at 165 Front Street <coughs> uh, a year and a half ago. Use it as a, currently as a carving shop. And our intention is to build a uh, two story apartment above in which we could uh, reside. Okay. So we're looking at you know change the use of the building from strictly commercial to residential commercial. You have you have a copy of the plot plan there. The only change to the footprint <coughs> would be the uh, an exterior staircase on the west side of the building that we would want to enclose and just move it over to the center of the building footprint stays the same square footage wise okay except that you're also proposing a little cut into the setback that little bump out on the north wall is if you look at the you have copies of the plans it's a little bump up on the second and third floor just to give the additional space a bit more room because it is a small footprint um okay neil the question i had was is that considered a uh an intrusion into the further intrusion to the setback since it's cantilevered or not? Well, there's, there's two issues, yes. It, it is an intrusion into the setback. But the other issue, and I talked to Paul earlier and, and I was not aware of this, um, the uh, proposed second floor addition. I, I don't know if Paul was aware of it at the time. But we have a pretty um, hard and fast rule. We don't let them go more than five feet. I mean, five feet is absolute maximum, and five eight is even better. We started better. into fire code because of fire code. Yeah. I mean, you basically fire couldn't have windows close. back there. You'd have to put a sprinkler system in. Um, you, you, it's, it's the building code regulates setbacks from lot lines, uh, particularly in business districts, so this particularly with wooden structures. This would be the, the bump out on the north side of the wall. Right, building. that's correct. It's it's it's, it's too it's it's too close. The building code. Restrictions. The most restricted buildings are five feet. All right. <laughs> it's, 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 it just windows cost you about three or four yeah. times as much. <laughs> yeah. But and there's even even where it's a wooden building, you could even be looking at some kind of a sprinkler system out in the back of that building. I just you know you don't I don't right. so think you'd want to really get into that expense. No, th that part of the it's a the, the the design is a work in progress still. That that bump out on the north wall be deleted yes, easy enough yeah so that would have to be is it was what neil's saying is you're just going to have to make it look like a bump out with a couple of fancy the, little design would be a little different framing you know, we, or something but you can't actually bump it out yeah which is which is fine as i say it's still a work in progress the final design of it the architect's idea was just you know it'd be a three-story building <coughs> just wanted to make it not quite look like that um, is, par is parking an issue? Parking's an issue. Did you think about that? I have, and I spoke with the building commissioner about that issue. And the way he looked at it, we're actually, re we have three deeded spots currently. The way the, the building is, is structured, uh, based on the square footage of what I have for the first floor and for the storage space above, I believe the building commissioner estimated that we were, uh, we should have eight parking spots. You sure it was me and not Laura, planning board? It was? Okay. 
I look a lot of plants. <laughs> and, but, <laughs> that is how and, I do it. You know, we, we figured the what, what what's I'm, required. You know, I'm not really a retail yeah. operation. I don't need that storage space above. So we're replacing that storage space above with a, a two bedroom apartment, which only needs two parking spaces. So we're actually lessening the parking impact by two spaces. Well, approximately. I understood the yeah. commissioner correctly. I would, the way I would do it, the, the retail space is um, 200, one parking space per 200 square feet, I think. One parking space per 200 square one, feet gross feet floor area. Area, yeah. And, and if he's, if in the, the dwelling is, I believe, two. The How dwelling many? would require two. Yeah. So what's the gross square footage of the, um, of the of the commercial space down below, just shy of 900 square feet. Just over that 900, much. isn't it? Yeah. Um, Where's the, uh, all is not lost. Well, because the planning board can waive the requirements, right. can't they? Right. The planning board can. It, it, you know, it says the planning board may grant a special permit to temporarily uh, temporarily waive the construction. Uh, you know of the of the of the um, of the parking. The, the issue is is that and and downtown it always it's just it, this. I mean that held up the Jack Conway building forever right. on the parking. Um, and it's 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 a bylaw I don't really like, especially because downtown I think it's really terrible. Doesn't but nevertheless, it's a bylaw that exists and we have to comply with it. Right. So um, and I don't know how. I don't know how this would really be looked at because this is these are all condos, correct? That is correct. Yeah, and um, so, it, it, you know, the bylaw says the parking um, can be waived by planning board because if it's um, you've got a couple of commercial buildings and a couple of residentials, and um, you know, for the most part, they're not going to over. Well, I mean, people always live where they live, but. You know, the heaviest use for parking in a residential is probably not during the day. Right. People are gone to work or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it would be something that the planning board would have to. I, I think to um, <coughs> if the way the way you look at it is is that you you are grandfathered. Okay, this is this is coming back to me now. You're taking away the storage area. Right. Correct. Correct. Um, he, he's because these buildings were existed prior to 1988, I believe. They're, they're when there was no parking requirements, they grandfathered as to the parking requirements. And the way we've done this before um, is we add up all the square footage that um, is in the existing buildings and the requirements, right. Right. and and that's what you're grandfathered for. Uh, it, it's 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 a it's a, so it's illusionary. <coughs> You're saying but, that it yeah. requires so if he's less. not increasing the parking need under the bylaw, uh, he doesn't need any relief. And if he's taken out 900 square feet of storage, which I think is one space per 300, he's actually taking out where's the, where's three, that? three grandfathered parking spaces, and he's adding two. He's he's removing 900 square feet of storage. Oh, it's already a two-story yeah. building. Yeah, it's going to be. Oh, I didn't the, realize. I didn't realize. Dwelling, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, I don't yeah. see that. You know, where is it? Um, all of the uses. And this theory has been upheld by a judge. <laughs> when, it's, when they, it's, when they, it, it's in writing. He, uh, I had sent a memo. He concurred with my memo. As you said, it's illusionary. There's no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's understood that yeah. the whole downtown district right. has insufficient parking. Right. Period. No, because what would happen if someone comes in and wants to put in a new use, and they say, "Well, we're tearing down this building, but we're putting in a new use," and all of a sudden you say, "Well, um, you're, you you need to add ten parking spaces." Right. And it's done to accommodate new buildings, new uses, things like that. And so I remember. But the. Yeah. The presumption is that the there's sufficient parking in the downtown district for the right. downtown district and as if, it exists. Exactly. And if if you, you build a new structure that needs more parking than currently exists, yes, exactly. Then you have to get more. Right. But if you build a structure that needs less than currently exists, then then, then, then you are you say there's then, enough. Then what is grandfathered under the bylaw? So he's he's so eliminating a use that requires three parking spaces. Exactly. And adding a use that only requires, requires two. two. 
But so if he's not, he's good. you're saying he's got, I thought he had 900 on the first floor and 900 on the second floor. Right. right. He's eliminating the, first, the second floor. The storage in the second floor, you could argue that the entire building's retail, but let's say the storage in the second floor only requires one per 300 square feet. I don't see it. I, I, you don't see what? The storage. Yeah, the, the, see, I think the, I'm just going on Paul's word. It's, it's yeah. there. Is the storage up there? I think yeah. it'd be good. Uh, yeah. Walk in at it. But the the plan sense. says one story. I think that's what threw me. Yeah. Well, there's no question is there's another story up there. I've been up yeah. there. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, but no, I'm yeah. not. It's just that that's what threw me initially. The original plan. plot plan that I submitted with the application, I believe, shows, records it as a story. Sure. Yeah. But Sarah's not seeing the bylaw where it says 300 for, for oh. storage. It's yeah. professional or yeah. other office in, is 100 per Square feet. I know I have it for my, huh? for my storage. I had it right. I can't remember what section it's in, but it's in there. Is it office is it considered or retail a warehouse? in mixed use buildings in situ? Maybe it could be Harbor. considered a warehouse? That storage warehouse? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then yeah. you're even better then because you're one space per 600 square foot. So you only need one and a half. Well, not better, right? Because no, he's putting them in a bank. That's actually worse. Because he only needs yeah. one and a half now, and he's going to need two. We need him to earn the spaces from the storage that he's eliminating. As oh. I said previously, you could make an argument that the whole building's retail. And then you've got your. <laughs> so even, even as you say now, with the retail at 900 square feet, right. that requires five parking spots, 300 square feet right. per it, it, storage area. There's another three. Yeah, that's <coughs> so that's a strict application. You know, there, I mean, if you had a uh, um, ice cream store and you had storage out, you you, know, you had a room out back. We consider that whole floor area retail. You know, the entire thing contributes to that retail business. That's how we we do it. But you but you teach carving, correct? Yes, I do. Educational exempt uses. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like that. That's that's one for two hundred. So. It, yeah, um, help doesn't help. Oh, exactly. Yeah, that's one for 200. And he's, and he's, uh, that would give him four and a half spaces. Yeah, no, but that doesn't do any better than retail. No, it's the same. No, it's but uh, either, no matter how we get it, we can get to we can get him to one for 200. Just I mean, um, if you, anybody's late, uh, Tony, I saw you late. It's 760.2, the applicability. That, that's right. the uh, section that I'm referring Thank to. You. I'm not suggesting this happen, but I'm wondering if it's a possibility. Looking at the plan in the package you presented, uh, the plan of land for the Otis House condominium, mm -hmm. it shows the area around your structure, mm -hmm. number 165, as being for the exclusive use of 165. Right. Um, I'm wondering if you could. Are you looking at? I'm wondering if you could um, piggyback a, a new <coughs> space in next to the building so that they were front and rear spaces. Right. And block it off, and so those two spaces, creating a new space in the downtown area, in your exclusive use. Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. Put a, put a residential space in there or something, if, if if need be. If we got to that, right. So you have another way, a number of a number of ways you could yeah. get around it. Sure. Show me exactly what you're talking about. Then. I see it's the condominium. He's got spaces all over <coughs> here, but this area here is for his exclusive use. So he could he could. He could get the condominium association to agree to allow him to put a space there and there. I think I Neil's don't know if he's can do that point no. was correct me if I'm wrong, but that with a the, point. the way it's grandfathered, yep. he doesn't need any more spaces than he currently has. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, there's some questions as to math that has been brought up. I'm not. Is it 900 or 600 <clears throat> upstairs? 900. Oh, it's 900. Yeah. Okay. I thought it's 965. If he has 900, he's grandfathered for three spaces. Yeah. Or, or at least But two. that's all he's got yeah, is three spaces. Yeah, three spaces, yeah. Huh? He's, but that's all he's got is three spaces. Plus the downstairs. Oh, they, 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 there's two floors of 900 square feet each. Right. Equals how many parking spaces? Right. I'm thinking so you need five. That's my problem. No, no, he's, no, he's, no. he's grandfathered. He's seven. grandfathered. He, it's... it's, <coughs> it's Th this is where you have to use your imagination. Oh, because it was built prior to 1988, and I could quote you the bylaw, but okay. I'd rather explain it. Um, you are uh, exempt from, um, you know, the parking bylaw unless you increase, and it, it actually uses the word need, I think. Right. 
Structures and land uses in existence on uh, January 1, 1988. You know the light just came yeah. on. Are not subject to these requirements as long as they are not enlarged or changed in a manner that increases their parking needs. So you're and saying he's taking three away? Yeah, you take three and away. And adds two. And adds two. Okay. That's what he's doing. Okay. Got it. So it's actually hypothetically a decrease. I hate this bylaw. <laughs> it well, really is, it's it, it, practically speaking, it things. works because if you applied this, yeah. you would have no new development in such a town. Right, right. Hour. I know, yeah, I, I know, which is why I hate it. Yeah. I think it's yeah. awful. But it's, it's what allowed us to do the um, the movie theater yep. and the condominiums because yep. the yep. movie theater yep. had they did the same for thing. Seven thousand calculations or something ridiculous. Well, the large theater bylaw gives the planning board the ability to. Right, but we're not, oh, him, we're not sending them over to the wolves. No. <laughs> no you have to. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to remember that this was on TV. Don't forget, you tell Sorry, planning board. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you, did you catch the story board? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mr. Limbacher, Mr. Limbacher, how are you, sir? <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> In the minutes. Okay. Um, since you're here, do you have any comment? I, I can't speak on behalf of the board. Oh, okay. Are there any personal comments? But personally, I, I think that Neil's interpretation of the parking board, A, is grandfathered, and B, it's, it's actually less. It's re really the critical point of it. I know it's, I, I think it's something that I always struggle for. I really, I really hate the <coughs> law. I understand it's, I think it's important to have parking, but it just makes development really difficult. So. Um, uh, well, you, a couple of things. So um, I guess I guess we've kind of come full circle, and parking is okay. Is that what we're? Yeah, I'm good with parking. Good with parking. Good with parking. Um, you understand that you can't go beyond five feet. You gotta. Okay, when yes. closer to the lot line. Right. That. He can he can stay at five point eight, or um, if he's adding on, yeah, no, that's that's set it back. yeah, that's that's acceptable. He's still got to do one hour five protection, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's, there's, uh, there's still requirements, but they're not as rigid as if you were, you know, under five feet. If you're under five, oh yeah, because he's 5.8. Right. Okay, okay, so that's good. Um, all right, does any, any board members have any other questions? So if the present building is 5.8 and he increases it at all, what, release, what relief does he need? He, he doesn't need any relief. He's not increasing it. He, he, he's not going to be able to increase. He can't go 3.8. He, he's not going to go. Right. He's not going to be able to go any more than. So we want the entire bump out to be removed, not just limited. We want it to stay full. Well, if he wants to go out of eight inches, point. you know, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. I, I, I think we might restrict it to five feet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. And that'd be neat to, That excludes eaves and. Yeah. Right. Excludes yeah. eaves. And just so. Um, the requirement in the business district is eight feet from the real lot line, not 20 or 30 either, so. Okay. So. Any other comments on it, Neil? Um, no. Nope. Great place to live. <laughs> Maybe it'll be for rent. I'm going to buy me one. <laughs> Anyone from the audience wish to be heard on this application? Sir. <laughs> I hope they don't get situated public access. Uh, well, I, I I agree with you. I think anytime somebody wants to invest in our downtown, it's it's great. Yes, hey, not at mine or yours. That's good. So, 
No. Mr. Orenberger, you had a? Yeah, just Bill Orenberger, just uh, what it's worth. I think Neil's provisions bylaw is dead on. But also, uh, there in the it's, it's great to see a, a local businessman and a local resident, a good guy who runs an excellent business, spend, you know, to revitalize that area. And so I encourage the board, you know, I think it's a great thing. Very good. Okay. Any 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 motion? Any anybody else? No. Okay. Any motion? Uh, Frank, it's your turn. You. Oh no! Come oh. on, Frank. You oh. don't get greedy I'm on the motions. The <laughs> the <laughs> the <laughs> Sarah is in charge, Jonah. That's You're right. Ready. I get to say. Move to uh, approve the request for a special permit under Section 810.3 of the Zoning Bylaw. Um, with a finding that the addi proposed addition of the two stories to the existing, is this a gale again? No. I don't think it's a gale. To the existing, um, and, and the proposal for well, an addition of, of two stories to the existing single story non-conforming building. Uh, in accordance with the plan. Did we determine it was uh, a two-story building? Existing two-story? Yeah, story and a half. Yeah, I, just, yeah. Uh, I know it was... Uh, I'm just reading from the application. Right, I know, so. and I think that was just to clarify it. Um, yeah, okay, modify. So so from the existing... Two-story to a three-story. Two-story to a three-story non-conforming building at 165 Front Street as set forth in the plan by Morse Engineering, dated March 10th, 2014. And do we want to address the uh, setback on the north side? Right, yeah. right, right. Provided uh, that. Subject to a revision of the plan, deleting the north side setback, which sho presently <coughs> shows 3.8 feet uh, to a uh, plan which will be consistent through the, the rear setback there to 5.8. It's actually the side setback, I think, isn't it? It's, it's the side. Yeah, yeah the it's rear. the north side setback. North side, I'm sorry. Five, five feet or five feet? Five, five No, no five more than feet, five eight inches. Eight. Yeah. yeah. So staying at what it is. Or five, no, you see it's five point? Yeah, yeah. five point eight. This is front. No, this is front. Yeah, that's front too, though. Oh, it's two fronts. So it's, yeah. it's a rear. Okay. Either way, it's eight. In that, in that zone, it's both eight. Yeah, right. This is the front Rear door. and side are eight. Okay. All in favor? Second. Oh, second? A little ahead myself. Now all in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> okay. Who, you're welcome. Thank you. Good um, who's going to who's going to write this one? Who wants to write? Heads up. Heads up. Oh, and you don't yeah, understand the part. Yes, but thank you. Yeah. Because you're not going to be here next month anyway. Yes, I am. Oh, are you? I thought you said. Oh, that's right. You are now. But it's the wrong week. Yeah. All right. Who's going to write? Heads um, up to the right. But you know what? We have Barry's Landing too. Yeah, so Ed's gone and we'll talk for decisions. I'll take this one. Do you understand <laughs> the parking? Let him do this because it's a parking oh, issue. Oh, okay, that's fine. You do. I'll you do, do that. Barry. So John's doing Barry's Landing. Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. And Ed, because I think the parking is. Well, I can't do John Barry's because I wasn't here. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Take care of that. I was, say, I was trying to, what the heck is Barry's Landing? <laughs> that was from last week. I wasn't here. Okay, good. I'm glad we were able to resolve that one. I hate that parking issue. Yeah, but it makes sense why they do it. Yeah, I understand that. I, it, the light, like you said, all of a sudden. Pre existing stuff. Sure, Paul, you're going to go first. This is actually going well. Which one's next? Read <laughs> Take that to five beyond 5.8 to five, you would have needed a variance, right? 
No, it's a, no. Build, it's a building. Uh, yes. It's a building code issue, not a really. A well, I understand, but to go yes. from five point eight to five, that was my question. I didn't yes, ask I it think right. So. Yes. So that's why he and we wanted him to stay at five point eight throughout, yeah. Yeah. not even go to five. Okay. What's up next? What are we at? Festus is. Is the island five? This is five. This is. Um, the island. No. Is it? Glades Road. <coughs> so I'll be looking at zero Glades Road. That's the island, okay. right? Okay. Where are you going? Uh, as, as soon as Nicole's ready. Oh, this is the island. Great rush. The fifth application is continued from February 20, 2014. General Connell, trustee of Elizabeth Connell Trust, Elizabeth Connell Trust, Elizabeth Connell Trust, Elizabeth Bill Arnberger. I'm, I'm here tonight uh, with the app of Jerry Cannell. I also, have Be I also have Betsy Cannell and her husband Ken with us. Okay. And our family has told me they're going to own this property for 54 years as of tomorrow. And, uh, Great Rock Island? At Great Rock Island. Oh. Right. It's a long time. So it's been the family for a long time. Tonight I have Paul Marabito here with me. And I also <coughs> have Stan Humphreys, our coastal geologist. Uh, and Paul and Stan are both going to give short presentations and then in turn. <coughs> questions on myself. Just by way of background is the Board of Health has already approved the septic design on the system and also the Conservation Commission has already approved an order of conditions for the construction of the dwelling and appurtenances and also a stormwater permit on this property. Uh, this property was not this property but it was subject to prior more intense development uh, proposals for approximately four houses on this and, and uh, two on Little Rock Island. Uh, Cornell families decided I think this is a pretty, again, this is a very unique, it's a 7.4 acre uh, island. And Stan will talk, it's very, very unusual uh, topography, soil conditions, and uh, shape to this. And we think it's a very good use for the property, and consequently, we are asking for a variance because, in the absence of the variance, there hardship is because of they're deprived of the use of the property which is allowed as a, as a single family residence in that zone. So at this point, just with that brief introduction, I'll ask Paul to show us what we're, <coughs> what we have before us today. <coughs> what I'd like to do is just uh, briefly uh, describe the site. Thank and you. Then I'm, I'm gonna, I'm um, Greg Rock Island is comprised of seven and a half acres, of, uh, primarily upland. Um, there's a salt marsh along the perimeter of the property, and then there's the top of a coastal bay. Uh, the proposal is to um, use an existing 12-foot wide uh, right away from Blaze Road up to the property line, and then from there construct the driveway up the spine of the hill to a proposed dwelling in this location here. This is the septic system that has been approved by the Board of Health. Uh, we did receive an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission to do the work in a 100-foot buffer zone here, and also some of the work for the septic system as well. Um, this is a 20 scale plan. It's a blow up of a portion of the the proposed house is right in this location. Is that location. the Great Rock? Right there. These are existing homes that currently, uh, well, these three homes access the existing 12 foot right of way. Uh, the proposal is to pave from. Paul, well, I'm sorry. Up. Can I just stop you? Um, <coughs> when you say those three homes, they use it right away, right now? These three here use it right away to come in. Which three? These two homes front on. Oh, okay, the okay. Right. And the plan is to uh, start the pavement here and bring it up to the um, 
to the proposed dwelling. Um, under the stormwater bylaw, we're installing a series of uh, drains, ditches, and swales, and other uh, improvements um, in accordance with both the DEP stormwater management guidelines and the town of Situate stormwater bylaw requirements. Conservation Commission did issue an order of conditions as well as a stormwater permit. There are two separate permits um, to do this work. The fire chief and I met, and he, he asked that we add to the plan, and this plan does include it. He's asking that we install a brand new six inch cement line, ductile iron pipe up to this point here and install a hydrant. The reason for that is to provide for a better fire flow. Also, the proposed home would be within 500 feet of it. This hydrant could be used in conjunction with the only hydrant at the end of the road, which is at the Emmy Glades Road, which is in this location here. He's also asked that this turnaround be extended a little bit so that can handle and accommodate the largest turning radii vehicle that they have. Um, in periods of bad weather, if they want to uh, park their vehicles here or up the driveway, then they have the ability to do that. Um, can I ask you so a question about the hydrant? <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Pardon? You're doing so well. The hydrant would be, a, a, if the, the fire department could use it for any of the houses in that <coughs> area? Yes, yeah, they could use them for any of these. What they do is they hook a hose here and bring it back, and they could use this one as well. Okay. So what it does is they add fire protection for the house, but it's also a, a benefit to the existing homes along the way at the present time. So, um, that's, it's pretty straightforward, and again, there's only one proposed <coughs> home up on that island, which is seven and a half acres in size. So. I mean, again, this is the 40 scale that shows you the whole site. I think with that, I'll, I'll end my presentation and open up any questions. Any questions, Anthony? No. No? no again, with the town water as well, you, aside from the hydrogen, the house would be fed with town water. <laughs> no, the, um, this, this, this house will be on a proposed well. Okay. So the hydro would be used for fire protection only. Right. Right. Yeah. Anything for no. Paul? Okay. I was going to ask, Stan Humphreys, our coastal geologist, and you have very unique uh, soil conditions and the island things, and I learned a lot in my own non-sophistication from Stan. I think the board might find it interesting. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, I also have learned a little bit more than uh, I expected <coughs> uh, in doing some of the research um, related to the, uh, the fact that this is not only named an island, but it is an island. Um, it's a Thai island, or a Thai land island. And um, that's by virtue of the fact that this barrier beach has uh, moved landward over the salt marsh in this area and actually now is connected to it. Um, I think that's a better photograph than, than the one that I selected. But I had selected this photograph off of Coastal Zone Management's um, shoreline change data <coughs> to better understand where the position of the beach was back in the 1800s. And it was much further seaward than you see here. Hmm. What's not on the plan is the barrier beach um, and its characteristics at that time, uh, 100 years ago, or 200 years ago, I should say. So I prepared this chalk. It's not in my testimony or my affidavit. But in taking this 1800s line of mean high water out here and using the basic concept that barrier beaches pretty much sustain their same width and height over time. Through sea level rise, the barrier beaches um, migrate landward and upward. And so this landform that is connected to the glades to, to mine it um, started out years and years ago, but um, in geologic times, but in the 1800s had a seaward boundary of this red line here, as, as shown here in the dashed line. And I had looked at the width of the barrier beach currently and moved it seaward proportionally to show that the barrier beach was more than likely in this location, not connected to Great Rock <coughs> Island at that time. But then in the 1900s, this shoreline now has moved back to virtually the road, but for the, the dike that's out there. 
and so that that landward migration of the buried beach shown here in orange has now moved into and attached to Rock Island, making it more or less a tide island. That term I had never come across before. I think this is the only feature in situate that's like this. Um, there are a lot of other drumlins, all the first, second, third, fourth cliffs are drumlin deposits. They are connected to the adjacent um, headlands, also by barrier beaches. But um, with that, I, I can take questions. If you'd like any more of understanding of the geology in the area. Is that line, is that beach going to, through time, move more? Well, that, that's a, a good photograph there of the, the stone dike system that's, that covers at least half, maybe two thirds of this area, that substantially will um, fix or stabilize the, the waterfront or the ocean front. Sediment still continues to move over top of that and move landward. <coughs> Quite a bit of erosion that occurs in destruction of this road over time. That material will continue to be placed over the salt marsh. But unfortunately, this barrier beach won't have the opportunity to also move its its beach area landward and keep up um, topographically uh, in a higher elevation over time. It's just going to get lower and flatter and smooth out. Is there ever time, you know, I know we've all seen these little animations on TV about, you know, all the pieces of lands, how they form the continents. Is there ever time that um, that's, that's not going to be considered an island anymore? Well, um, it at one time was totally surrounded by salt marsh. Yeah. This surficial material that's moving over that salt marsh and now attaching it to the land, um, I suppose, it starts to fit a definition of peninsula because it's not totally surrounded by water. But um, because of the types of soils in this area, um, very different from the rocky. Um, loamy soils as well as mostly boulders that comprise the uh, Great Island. Um, it's going to keep its topographic elevation up to somewhere around 44 feet or something like that. That won't change at all. And uh, just a quick question on the island itself is that mostly rock or is there a bunch of roses surrounding that? <coughs> no, I, I think you, you, during the hundred year floods, the borders of this island will be subject to wave action coming across the marshes. There will be um, some erosion of the coastal bank feature, but it's nothing that's going to be regularly eroded and will move um, measurably Concept of Pangea and continental drift. I'm not sure it applies here. <laughs> Atlantis rises. <laughs> um, no, I, if you've got access to it, it's um, it's appropriate. The only issue is the frontage, right? Yeah, the driveway. Right. right. Yeah. In. In. The, the elevations of the island, I won't, I won't reiterate Stan's affidavit, I thought it was excellent. We have from elevation 8 to 44, rocky crags, unique soil conditions. You know, we got all three that's unusual for a variance. We got the soil conditions, the shape is round, the topography is incredibly erratic. It's, it's certainly not consistent with any other pro property in that zoning district. So we are a unique situation. And one of the things, as I said, uh, the Connell family's owned this for 54 years. And this was way before, this was before adoption of frontage requirements. I mean, the lot was created by the land court in 1912. And uh, 
So it's way before any of these things, and it was a buildable lot. It was only subsequently from the town of Situates adopting a frontage requirement that the reason that we're here for a variance. So this property on the land court plan that you have has been in existence since 1912, and it has not been changed, modified, reduced, or anything else. So the Connell family simply and their predecessors have certainly owned it. So, you know, there's a key nexus here for the cause of the variance and the hardship is tied directly to the existing conditions that have been there for over 100 years. And uh, I can go through the, the irregular shape of the parcels and all of these things, all of which are enumerated very specifically in Stan's uh, affidavit. I think anyone can see it's kind of obvious a little inf literal enforcement of the frontage price deprives the Pennell family of the right to use this. And again, this is a, this is a pretty modest suggested use for the property. There was a prior proposition before the planning board for four houses on this. And the variance is, you know, is, is, is to build, build one house and any the other pertinent uses that are allowed under the bylaws. And uh, so I feel we meet, we meet all the variance criteria, uh, you know, by 40A and we already have the other necessary permits and from particularly at a, just so you know from a conservation standpoint uh, my clients paid for the for Merrill of uh, the town's own consulting engineers and they finally reported they they agreed with Ross engineering's engineering of this that basically it meets stormwater management criteria no water comes off the property as a matter of fact the entrance onto the property is all as porous pavement actually with all kinds of infiltrators and other things. So no water is coming off this property. And uh, I think in light of the fact, and again, which is something I learned new, I thought this was an R3 district. I didn't realize when you get way the heck down on Glades Row, right before the Glades, it becomes an R2 district. But, but ne nevertheless, it's 20,000 square feet. This is seven and a half acre island for, for one home. So, uh, I'll answer any questions, but, but I think all the variance criteria make them very specifically on, which is I've never had a situation on all three of the statutory criteria. Neil, do you have a comment? No, I was just reading the affidavit. Um, the, um, I guess because I've you know, given this some thought in, you know, an, an island connected by a bridge, is it still an island? An island connected by sediment, you know, is that not no longer an island? I mean, it's it, it, uh, it's just food for thought. I just but no <laughs> no man no. is an island. Yes, that's no right. Man is an island. That's and, and yet there is a, <coughs> there is the island of man, which happens to be oh, right. the ex same. What did you call it? A topo or something? Yeah. A tombola. Yeah. Or a tombola. Tombola. It, it's yeah. a tombola. I found. I learned that today, and I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> the island of man does have excellent yeah. whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> we should all go there. Too. Um, yeah. The only other thing it embellishes, and I don't know if you've had an opportunity to read the letter from the fire chief, and yeah. not only is this neutral, <coughs> right now there are some fire access issues and other things, and we're actually correcting uh, not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of the immediate neighborhood. Uh, you know, the firefighting capacity of, in, you know, for health and safety uh, reasons. And also, regardless of the fact whether I think Stan is pretty clear this is an island geologically, but this is, this is a, a, a very similar situation recently, you know, about a year ago on Bailey's Island. Yep. It's the same situation. It's connected with a causeway, you know, from, uh, from Indian Trail, uh, over Wood Island Road, over you know, uh, over Wood Island, and then and then to there. So it's a very analogous situation. Now, does this? I know this is not really relevant, but does this? Do you also the same family own Little Rock Island? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was the only variance I ever granted. We saw what happened to that. It's nothing. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. You see what happened. Jimmy Burke had to push his table a little further apart because they get a variance for that. Now, yeah. now, now you can you can hear your dinner mates. There you go. So, um, all right, do, um, we did get some objections. I noticed some letters. I don't know if any of those people are here tonight and want to speak. Sir? I, I did not send a letter. My name is Dan Carney. I live at 163 Rear Glaze Room. Actually, Mr. Maravito's picture was really helpful if you don't mind putting it back up. Okay. 
Which uh, uh, the one that blew up the houses just at the entry. Uh, which and which can you point to us for which yeah, house you're at? The last one. Right. Sure. The second last one. Right. This is my house here. Okay. So there's a, a, one thing I wanted to correct. Um, I think Mr. Maravito said three houses use this. In, in fact, more than three. The driveways for both of these houses are off this. Okay. Foot. As is the driveway for this house, as is my driveway. Um, as is, it's not shown here, this takes a left. And there are two more homes here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six homes that are sharing this 12 foot right away. What I didn't hear in the presentation is what's the proposal? Does that become a common driveway? Does that become a subdivision road? I didn't hear that. I don't, I, so you just, speak just, to it? Yeah, just the answer to that is just like probably the other property, they've researched the title. Since 1912, there's a deeded uh, land court right of way on that. So it, it, it does not become a public road. It will be used in common with all the other, with all the other properties. So, so does that mean it's a common driveway? No. No, it's, it's, no a common it's driveway a common. is a specific meaning under the bylaw of the town of Situate. So <laughs> until we get onto our property, there aren't going to be other than, you know, it's not going to be paved, it's not going to be this, they're bringing in oh. water service to increase this, so basically, the, the, you know, the quality of the, of the way will remain similar to what it is. Am I correct in that, Paul? So the, the intention is, isn't to make this a public road so that anyone else has access to it or anything like that, no. Okay, so I guess what I'm concerned about is, while I can appreciate that in 1918, we didn't have these laws. We do have them now, and presumably for a reason. And so I don't see any any way that there's any frontage here. I mean, heck, we all sat through, and I was worth a discussion on the 50 foot versus the 100 foot uh, in this meeting. Here we have zero feet, and, and and maybe you could try and talk yourself into the fact that that right of way is common. We won't call it that language, but it's common shouldn't we look to some guidance in, in, the, in the zoning bylaw as to how a common driveway would be treated? If you look at the guidance, it says a maximum of three homes. We've already got six. So we've got a non-conforming situation. Wouldn't this make that non-conforming situation worse? The other point I wanted to make is that while I appreciate this turnaround for a fire truck, I can tell you my own sister took out this wall with her mini bin because this corner, there's no way of fire trucks going to take this corner. There's 12 feet here. There's a there's a wall on this side. There's a fence on this one. There's, this is irrelevant. There's no way a fire truck can take that corner. Uh, as I say, the minivan couldn't take the corner. Right. Well, the only thing I can tell you is that the fire fire department signed off on it, that it was sufficient. So That it's sufficient to take that left onto the 12 foot right away. Well, I'll defer to the fire chief. Yeah. He has a little more expertise than I do in that area. Right. Uh, but the, the only other point in, in helping to answer that question is on uh, situated as a bylaw on a common driveway situation, and that contemplates a construction under present standards, which all kinds of you know qualifications to, to build a common driveway. So this isn't a situation in the construction standards that tied into when they actually if you read it, it varies depending on the number of homes and the amount of construction. That, that's on it. But exactly the reason why 40A exists is this is exactly the kind of situation that it contemplates when there's a, when there's a bona fide hardship due to the three very narrow criteria that are specified in the statute, which I, I believe this is exemplary of, of those issues. I think, I think the thing to understand is that um, it, this is not the same type of application as you've heard before. This is for variance. This means we're saying that they don't have to have any frontage, okay? And it's an extremely limited um, circumstance that you can get this. And in fact, I've been on the board seven or eight years or something. This is only the second one, and the only other one I granted that I remember granted was for the other island, because. It's and it's you have all cri and, and uh, you have all kinds of criteria and Mr. Um, uh, Attorney Orenberger was going through that. It has to be completely unique about the shape of the land, the topography of the land, 
and it's it can't exist elsewhere in that same zoning district so you know people come all the time and and want variances and they just don't meet it because it's such an extremely limited situation this is really unique and and they're not changing <coughs> that right away they're not asking us we can't do anything with it um, but it's something that it, it's a legal right that existed for over 100 years now and they're just you know kind of <coughs> going around to exercising it they have an opportunity to build and they don't have any more rights or any less rights than they've had for 100 years on that on that right away they get to go up and down it because it's it's a legal right that they they were given over 100 years ago does that help at all well i guess then my questions move toward what the intended use is there was a discussion earlier about the four homes it was brought up twice here already uh, what wasn't brought up is that that was not passed and, and it was not passed because the use of four homes worth of dwelling was going to create enough traffic that it was deemed not to be beneficial for the neighborhood, given that all of us who have those homes in that area use that 12 foot right of way to get to the beach, our kids travel on that, to add more traffic to an already dangerous environment was something that in that previous discussion was deemed to be not beneficial to the neighborhood and was actually a safety concern for the pedestrians who also are sharing that space. So my question is what would this use B and in four homes, I think at the time they were just going to be three bedrooms, uh, was deemed unsafe. What, what would the use be? What would be proposed now? A house, an eight bedroom so house. How, how, how big is there a, a restriction on how big a house can be? It's shown right on the conservation. It's shown on the existing plan. Conservation Commission could, already could approved you just it. Tell me what it is? Uh, I, I don't have my ruler with me. You Paul, flip down to the first sheet. What is the septic? What's the septic system designed for? The septic system is designed for eight bedrooms. Okay. Right. So the uh, leach area. The perk. The perk. Perk. There was <coughs> twenty-three bedrooms. I understand. But but it's so. Yeah. We're designing a septic system for an eight up to an eight bedrooms home. So is. Exactly. Well, let me let me just okay. let me just kind of help you out here on this. First of all, the the other proposals for this piece of property were were not in front of this board. They were in front of the planning board, and quite frankly, I have no idea why what their reasoning was. But this is an all new I'm application. Sure it's not yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is too. But I mean, it was not before this board, and we get to look at everything anew. So I don't know what their reasoning was, but it wasn't approved, and here we are today. No, I, I'm certain it's a matter of record, though. I mean, you could, and we, if we continue this, we could, I'm sure, look up and find out the records. And we were it doesn't matter to us, I have to tell you. That wasn't our petition. Yeah, yeah it I, wasn't. I, it was somebody I, else. I, I didn't you both. I just said what doesn't matter to us, we have to make our own decision. And w the reasoning of the planning board is their reasoning you know we have to look at the criteria we're asked to do something very specific okay. and um so you know well and, and it, it's fair to say that not being familiar with the application before the planning board it was for a subdivision i imagine right and a subdivision <coughs> is a entirely different thing this is a piece of property that is owned um, and has a right for certain things to happen on it it has access because of a deeded right of way, um, so there's no, there's nothing new here. They're not asking to do a taking or, or impose on anyone else's rights. It's a right that already exists, um, and to build a structure, you know, a dwelling on the property, it really doesn't matter how big it is. It's a large parcel. Um, it's um, there aren't a whole lot of eight bedroom homes in the <coughs> century, I imagine, um, but there are a few. I, lived in them, uh, lived in one. Um, the, uh, and you, and Plymouth House of doesn't, Corrections doesn't come out. It doesn't mean that they're going to be used um, to their maximum. I mean, there are eight bedroom homes in this town that are being used with, by three people living in them. It doesn't, um, yes, you're probably going to see guests coming um, and there won't be parking on Glades Road um, or on the right of, or on the 12 foot section of the right of way. Um, so. Hi, um, I'm Jackie <coughs> Sandow. Uh, my address is 147 Island Road, so I'm not on the map. You're not on the map, okay. I'm not on the map. Um, but I really 
share Pam's concerns about the effect on the neighborhood and the parking and fire and the safety. <coughs> troubling to me um, number one on the fire on the safety you know I have small children they run around and lose everywhere it's kind of the life of the neighborhood um, and so I am concerned about extra cars going up that way through the middle and through the backs of the neighborhoods um, and number three I guess maybe it's all in the affidavit but I think for the benefit of the public it would be important to understand why none of us can do anything with our lots really and why where there was nothing and there's no pre-existing structure why these people can build there I understand that there's a purchase and sale agreement in place so you know the fact that they were owning it I understand that they're selling it um, subject to I assume getting all of these permits but I guess I want to understand that why someone can build where there's no footprint I mean we always hear about footprints um, number do you, I, can I can I address that that would be great an undeveloped parcel of land that meets the requirements of zoning setbacks etc you can build on that's what we do that's that you I mean, you go and you draw a plan and you record it with the registry of deeds and it's you can build on it that's <coughs> it's different from changing what's currently exists on a parcel that is a that is um, not dimensionally uh, doesn't dimensionally meet zoning and that doesn't mean you can't do anything with your home if, if your home went down um, or you wanted to come before the board to have modifications or do things to it we'd be looking at your application in the same way we look at the, <coughs> um, the footprint is really just a case of sometimes your footprint of an existing home on a lot doesn't meet current zoning and applicants come before us to look for relief in that area this applicant's not looking for any relief on setbacks or lot size or you know that's not the issue before us this is a seven acre parcel of land that they want to build a house on I don't, I, I'm not following your logic about the, the houses that exist there on um, pre-existing on conforming lots um, being limited on how they can build. They, they certainly can build if they have a, if you have the ability to create on-site sewage disposal and you have the lot size and certainly you could do it. it, it you could take down, take four or five houses, you take, them, take the houses that are there acquire seven acres of land and ask to build a house on it, I guarantee you're going to be allowed to build a house on seven acres of land. It's so that's not part of the variance that was requested. The variance only deals with frontage. Correct. That's right. Yeah. Okay. It's just it's about that they don't have frontage on a way. They, their frontage is through a right-of-way access. It also might be worth it to mention the applicant's not before us asking for the right to traverse this right of way to get to and from the property. They have that right now. And they, they have that right, they could, they could do certain things on this property that would require a lot more traffic on that right of way than a single family home would. It does have eight bedrooms mm -hmm. available. It's, I guess what we were um, concerned about with number of cars going through that narrow right of way. That is the way to the beach. There's only one entrance to the beach for the whole neighborhood. So, you know, it's all sorts of traffic. Um, so, uh, let me see. Um, I noticed in the bylaws that there's um, some um, requirements that um, the building relate harmoniously with the nature and context of existing buildings in the vicinity. I do note, um, for the record, that all the existing buildings in the vicinity Yes, no one comes near an eight bedroom home. So the, the scale of the building is the quite casino weird. at the end of Glades probably does. That's right. Uh, yeah. But would that be in the vicinity? Uh, as the crow flies, it's in the vicinity. It's in the zoning right. district. Yeah. It's in the zone, and it's also in the zone. Would it be in the zone? It's in the zoning okay. district. I stand corrected on that. When I 
think of vicinity, I think of the neighborhood. But it, but it's, it's a in, different beach. That's a different. Think beach of it this way. <laughs> think of it this way. As you come down Glades Road, um, you have a certain zoning district, and then it changes to a different zoning district, and then it increases in the zoning district, and the Glades Association properties are all in that this, that new district Roger. that this one's in, the larger district. So, it, so when this district was laid out, it included this parcel along <coughs> with those, those, that land of the Glades Association. So that's the vicinity. So your, 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 point, so your, your point is well taken. There is a much larger house out there than what they're planning to develop. But the, why is, I guess just explain for my benefit, then why are they in a different zoning district than where we are, where it would be deemed, I don't know, thickly settled or whatever those yellow signs say? You're in the same zoning district. You are in the same zone. You are. You're in an R2 district. Yeah. In an R2, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing, just to, just to reiterate, and I think it might have got lost in the thread of this, you know, and again, I defer to the fire chief is coming into there. And this is <coughs> actually, I heard the story that there, that there has been uh, fires in this property. This significantly increases the ability of the Citroen Fire Department to, su to suppress fires. And, uh, you know, new water lines, new hydrants. That's all good stuff. Turnaround that they don't have. Yeah. Well, they're up, they're up, the op opponents are saying that you can't get in there to turn around, but you could still walk your hose in there and pick up on well, the. Well, that's right. The fire, and, but and if there's a big enough fire, those trucks can knock down a wall <coughs> and, a, uh, uh, and a fence pretty easily right. um, if they have to get in to <coughs> access it. So. And I don't mean access of fire there. I mean access of higher firemen to Carney's house or. or I used to know some of the names of the people on the. Um. You know, I think, and I think we have to remind ourselves that um, uh, Chief, Ju uh, Chief Judge is an extremely intelligent, um, knowledgeable, and dedicated fire professional in this town who has seen some terribly tragic things happen, um, and he would not. He would not endanger anyone's lives for the sake of one house being built. If he thinks that it's sufficient to handle things, I think you can feel very comfortable in that. So, right. sir. Um, two, two questions that I have. First of all, is it reasonable to ask if the variance is granted, because our, our primary concern is the access road. If it's granted, is it reasonable to ask that it be attached with the provision that it could never be more than a single family home and that there would be a limit to the number of cars that would be parked at that home? Well, well we, can't, we can't limit the number of cars, period. Okay. You know, that's just, we don't limit the number of cars, any, except in a permanent, <laughs> permanent situation. Um, the, um, it is actually kind of more of a question. Um, when you grant a variance for frontage, um, I'm assuming it applies to one building. And if they were to construct more, they would need to go uh, uh, for subdivision. And I think that was, that was the, you agree with that? Yeah, it's a single, we're, we're asking yeah. for a single family, single and that family the, home, and whatever the customary if, pertinent uses of the Yeah, if the board grants a variance, I think it should, should be noted that, you know, this is frontage for one dwelling um, in, in, in I know the, the prior uh, application went to the planning board was for a subdivision right and with a subdivision the reason it failed is that you have to improve the road uh, but they could have on seven acres they could have potentially 23 bedrooms they could have built a lot of houses right. four or five houses yeah. and um, and I know you know a lot of the discussion back down was the proximity of the houses when they widened the road and tried to improve it and everything else and uh, that, I'm pretty sure that's why the applicant withdrew. It just wasn't going to happen. Okay. Uh, and, and just by way of clarification, one of the butters was asking us, there are no purchase and sale agreements on this property. And in fact, the Connell family for a number of years, and, and you know, both their parents have passed, we're going to build uh, a family home or even something more, more than that. But now the time has come with the family is they are going to sell this and some new families going to come and, and build a house. And the reason is, you know, uh, the footprint that's there, it's for conservation purposes. For the simple reason is whoever, as anyone knows on a conservation issue, anyone who's going to build something, you know, there's like a thousand to one chance that's what they're going to build. They're going to build within, within the perimeter of that. 
So in all likelihood, that isn't going to be what it's in, but it's going to be within the perimeter of that. And if it deviated from that perimeter, they have to go get all new permits. The, the reason for my question is it's been a fascinating evening. You just have to identify yourself each and every time. Every for, time. My name is Dan Carney. I live at 163 Rear Blades Road. Thanks. The reason for my question, earlier in the evening, we saw our, <coughs> an example where a four-bedroom house turned into five apartments. And I'm wondering what an eight-bedroom house could turn into later once we've opened a variant. This is a variant, so you, you explain, for a very specific purpose. This is a, a no frontage. This is a unique property. You started to lay out the reasons why variants might be granted. What I'm concerned about is that that passion would be lost subsequently when, say, an eight-bedroom house wanted to become a 10-apartment house. Uh, just like the example we saw earlier. <coughs> well, it's, it's in a residential zone, and the other yeah. apartment was a business zone, so they're treated differently. So we've got that, that hurdle right off the bat. Plus, plus, just by way of clarification, that was a pre existing non conforming building that's there for 150 years. This is brand new construction. And so the variance is going to, if it's issued by the board, it's going to be to construct a single family dwelling with. Other appurtenances allowed under the bylaw, but a single family, all right? And that's all it is. So you cannot make a two-family. You cannot subdivide this to make three or four households. You can't do it. Well, it, it is, and the customary appurtenances that you, it's reasonable to assume on a seven-acre parcel that there may end up being a tennis court out there. Or right. the pool might be difficult because of the uh, topography. <laughs> above but, ground. Above but, ground. Um, kind of but above ground. ground pool or some, some sort of a, the, certainly other things are going to be done there associated with a single family, but the, the variance that they're asking for and what it will be will be a variance to build a single family home. And any change from that um, would, would be in violation of the variance. And variances are so hard to come by. You better ask for the one you want. You're not going to get a change to it. Yes, yes ma'am. Hi, I'm Kitty Ellers. I live at 151 Glaze Road, the front. And uh, it still completely boggles my mind because that area is so small and there's so little space and the houses are so close together that I um, decided to drive down, I call it the, the, the Carney's driveway, it, it's, I know it's a shared driveway. And I, I own a, a VW Beetle. I could barely turn and get down the driveway. It just boggles me how these big trucks are going to get down. And another thing that, that kind of um, makes me think is the integrity of Glades Road. After 101, Glades Road, or maybe 145, Glades Road gets very, very narrow. And two people usually can't go. One person has to pull over to the side and let the other one by. There's two-way traffic. And there's no sidewalk. The integrity of Blades Road is nothing but several sinkholes filled with dirt. I don't know how construction trucks are going to go down there and turn that corner that my VW couldn't take. No, I, I'm just, because I was down there walking, and, and it's not that I'm against the house, but it's the space. Everybody's on top of each other. And when I saw the four houses, this. They're, they're all lined up. There's not just six houses. Beyond that, there's other little houses and houses going up and down Glades Road. And I'm sure you guys have, have probably already been down there to walk around to see how small the space is. And as I said, the integrity of the beach and the beach wall, which is already undermined from the storms, and the use of the big trucks going back and forth, back and forth, is going to further crack the wall. And all the little cottages there, some of them are close to 100 years old. Uh, the, uh, my walls are cracking when, when the big trucks go by. What about that? Well, the only thing I can, the only thing I can tell you Sorry, is that, the, no, it's, that it, I understand. I understand yeah. your concern. And, um, and uh, the, clearly it's going to be a challenge for um, whoever you know, whoever the contractor the left behind. Yeah, well, it will be. It will be for a period of time. But again, um, you know, they're going to have to. They're going to have to figure it out because you know I don't know how they're going to do it. That's not. That's not our job to figure out. I don't know if they're going to have to bring a helicopter in or something. I don't know. But they're going to have to get it in there, and um, 
you you can you cannot find a better uh, building in, you know inspector on this uh, South Shore who will if there's problems during construction sorry Neil <laughs> that you call them up and and the contractors you know they they don't want to cause damage either because they could potentially I, you know, be responsible I, I would I would say you know they 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 have some very large construction vehicles, you know, carrying lumber and everything else. They probably won't be able to make that turn. Yeah, they're going to have to result, figure it out. They're going to have to bring smaller trucks, which yeah. is better than bigger trucks in this situation. And uh, I think as far as... <coughs> yeah. But I think also, too, that, you know, we have factors that other homes in that area that need work done on their house yeah. have to make accommodations to get yeah. the vehicles in to do work at right, half exactly, the time yeah. That, yeah. that needs to be done, too. And I'm sure they'll have to accommodate the same thing because you only have right. open to get through. So no matter whether you're going to the you know, proposed house or work or existing houses, vehicles and, uh, of some sort have to get in there to do work from time to time. Yes. I'm Kitty Ellers, 151 Blades Road. Actually, there is, there's no time that nobody's not doing work on Blades Road. Mm -hmm. There are constant contractors, and most of them usually at my house, but <laughs> all the time, I mean, every up and down road, it all pretty much year round. Yeah. Always. Na I guess nature of the beast. Oh, I know all about that. This he is, knows about yeah, that. Yeah, it's called <laughs> Northeasters. Sure. Yeah. Yes. I'm Brendan O'Donnell. I live at 159 Blades Road. And um, we live in a very tight community and where we are all friends and the houses are very small and um, it would destroy our community and it, uh, um, there's not enough frontage and uh, I mean I, I see the board uh, say you know, it's uh, the fire trucks can get up there. That's great, but um, actually, I don't mean to say this again, but actually, it is a common driveway because me and uh, uh, his father Tommy share the driveway. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jackie Bay Sandell again. Um, just a quick question, and I'm not sure if this is for the soil expert who may have looked at this, but are there any um, endangered plants or anything on the island that, the, that would need to be considered in this application? No. Did that you came study up that? Conservation, and the answer is no. Okay. Conservation is the, the, the board you that would that result. issue of conservation. That question was asked and he answered already. Oh, actually, it was asked about wildlife, not about plants. Oh, excuse me. The soil, I thought, would be here since we've got our soil expert. Oh. I was there, so I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Geology and botany are the same thing. Yeah, so well, I, don't, I, don't, I just, I just don't want to put him. I just don't want to put him on the spot. He's, he's presented as an expert on geology, and um, I think you might be talking about botany. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know what botany is. No, botany is plants. Our high school teacher employs us. Yeah, I don't know. That's a question that we really ever, it's, we've never been asked and it's never been kind of brought up. But, um, huh? It's a conservation question, isn't it? It's a conservation yeah. question? Yeah. That would be. There's a, there's a couple of boards that are more suited to yes. address that. Yes, ma'am. Hi, yes. I'm Jen Gagan. I'm at 65 Common Street. Hi. Um, been here throughout the evening as everyone else. And I'm waiting for actually the next thing that's coming up. Yeah. And I'm just why can't we move along? Like <laughs> getting off topic. Um, and you very politely said earlier today, you know, if we could not ask questions twice, if we could keep things moving forward, um, I would politely request that we please do so. Well, I, 
I appreciate that. It's not exactly like town meeting where someone wants to move the question, yeah. but uh, <laughs> we want, you know, this, I know, I know, but the, and the important thing is for everybody to remember is that th as they've testified, this is, you know, they feel that this is going to change their neighborhood. So we want to make sure that they're able to say what they need to say, ask the questions. We've got all the experts here. So um, I think it's winding down, but you know, we just again want to make sure everybody has a chance to be heard. And we'll stay as long as we need to stay for the next application. So. And, and sometimes we do, we do come up with some new information that we're not familiar with um, in these hearings. So it's, we don't come in with a predetermined uh, decision. It's, this is something we have to work out here in public. Yeah. The only way we can do it. All right. Yes, sir. Just one more. Dan Carney, 163. Yes. Our Blades Road. Uh, one more thing. We've, we've said a few times that the fire chief signed off. Is that in the affidavit? And can we confirm? It's a it's a letter that he wrote, and it's in the file. And um, Can you confirm for me that it, I understand that the radius uh, on the picture he has confirmed is uh, sufficient for the turnaround? Did he specifically say that he could take the turn from Blades Road onto the floor right away? What he simply said, I concur with the improvements showed on the revised site plan, which would include all of it, um, dated <coughs> March 11th, 2014, and am satisfied that the improvements to the road, the turnaround, and the additional water main and the fire hydrant will enhance the department's capability in assessing and providing necessary services to the property and those in the neighborhood. T taking nothing away from, from him. Uh, could I ask that he please amend that to make sure that he has been considering the turn from Blades Road on? I could imagine that when he looked at the plan, he saw and commented on the other improvements, which I agree uh, are, are quite appealing. Perhaps not, but it isn't specifically stated there. Could we make sure that he specifically addresses that he can take the left off, off Blades Road? You know, the, the fire department has many vehicles. They have yeah. ambulances, they have command vehicles, they have pickup trucks, um, they could carry men, hook up hoses. I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's uh, you know. We're thinking of a, 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 a 30 foot ladder truck that doesn't always. Perhaps not, and that's, that's, but they don't have that now either down right. there. But, and I would suggest in an emergency, um, Police Powers Act, you have yep. the ability to do anything you want. Mm -hmm. um, those stone walls, those, those little entry walls that abut the right of way would not be an obstruction to getting emergency vehicles into that area. We're not talking about emergency vehicles accessing this right of way on a daily basis. It's in times of emergency, those stone walls come out. I don't think that's a, I, I think between the two houses, there's no question they could get a piece of equipment in there. If they needed with, to. With all due respect, when I was speculating on whether they could do that, you told me to defer to the chief of fire. I, I'm oh, asking you the, the same thing. No, I, I understand. But the problem with the, that the fire chief has when we look at other applications like, the, like this and other things, they need to be able to get behind buildings, get into areas where vehicles are not normally, right. don't normally access. They don't, they don't care about the right of way. They care about is there enough space between trees because they can't take out trees. Turning the vehicle around is important. Um, as Neil said, having uh, specialized equipment, they might feel it appropriate in times of storms to stage a piece of equipment in that hammerhead turnaround um, that would be there in case people needed to be evacuated that could get in the right of way without damaging the stone walls. Um, but I think the, the fire department, um, the improvements, uh, what the fire department is looking for at that point is, can we ask the applicant to do anything additional in their layout to further enhance? They can't ask to do something on property they don't own. Um, but, the, but they've asked the applicant to propose um, improvements that will enhance the fire um, access. Um, stone walls, if they're, if they're a deterrent, in times of emergency they are not. In, in, on a regular basis, I can understand accessing with uh, heavy equipment. Um, I don't think you're going to have, you have trouble getting um, uh, cement, cement mixer into that right of way. But, but, the, but the applicant will have to figure out how they're going to 
um, build their, construct their property. Um, certainly you know what it's like getting equipment into your home. Um, I just don't think that's a big issue for, for us to make a decision upon. It's, uh, okay, so I, I guess the answer is no, I'm, it's not reasonable. No. I, we, I, we're not going to ask him to do it. The chief judge, when he looked at that, he looks at all the plans that are forwarded to him. He makes the considerations. I don't question um, how he arrived at it. I just, I just know that he says that it, it looks good to him, and that's enough for us. So, that's enough for me anyway. I, I, I hope we don't look back on this and wish that he I don't think that building one house is going to put the neighborhood at any greater risk for fire then that um, currently exists with currently the layout exists, and yeah. having a fire hydrant there is going to a place to turn it. a vehicle around has to improve it yeah. from, from chief judge's standpoint good <coughs> okay. anyone else all right um you want to do this motion variance <laughs> Wow. Um, did, did, did I do the last variance? What's the criteria? Uh, you want to go through the criteria again? There we go. Uh, granting a variance, I think the motion is something to the effect of uh, granting a variance for construction of a single family dwelling with appurtenances uh, in that it meets the conditions of by variance criteria of Mass General Laws 40A Section 10 and specifically find that owing to circumstances relating to the soil condition, shape, and topography of the land and especially affecting such land but not generally affecting uh, not generally the zoning district which is located, a literal enforcement of the provisions of <coughs> an ordinance or bylaw would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, uh, to the petitioner and the desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent and purpose <coughs> of uh, the ordinance or bylaw. Um, all right, I'll make this motion. I move that um, we grant the request of the applicants uh, for a variance for the construction, uh, for a variance from the lot frontage requirements of the bylaws uh, to authorize the construction of a single family dwelling uh, on a lot known as Great Rock Island, um, which has less than 100, required 100 foot of frontage. Um, as um, I don't have the dates of the plan, as laid out January 21st, 21st. January 21st uh, 2014, plan drawn by Ross Engineering. Um, and a part of a revision date of March 11th. And a revision date of March 11th. We do not have that. We do. Oh, yes. With, the, okay. with a revision date of March 11th, 2014. Further discussion? Any comments, questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'll submit a draft decision on this. Please. Thank you. Thank you for your help and your patience. Thank you. Thank you to the neighbors for coming out. And I just have to reiterate, we do this every time. One of you could be before us and we'd be looking at it from the same standpoint of what you need to be able to do with your property by law, by right. It's um, just such a waste of beautiful property, though. It, I don't know. I think the applicant thinks it's the perfect use the of it. The applicant would be perfectly happy, I'm sure, to sell it to anyone if they'd like to keep it um, in, in its natural state. Yeah. What's the world's end? Is it true? Well, Trustees for reservations would be happy for a donation too. Uh, well put. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Yeah, good to see you. One house left. I know. It's hey, going to be a gorgeous house. Anybody want a water? Would you like one? 
I'll I got, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Wide access to well, uh, one. I got. No, I have. I have it in my office. I buy it. Please, John. No, I'm all set. Thanks. All right, two. They'll be back, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are next. She's getting out the applicant. Yes. <coughs> Thank you. Right, the games. Hmm? You're waiting for UMass tomorrow? I just keep hanging out. The Harvard one today. Did they really? Harvard yeah, won. they won. Uh, beat Cincinnati. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. 12th like, seed beat the 5th seed. Or something. That was uh, one of Obama's upsets. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, That's the only thing well, I saw on the news was, he he was that he picked Harvard. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Well, I think with, with the Crimea <laughs> issues going on, I think he shouldn't be making pizza. You're right. I think he you're probably right. Something else. <laughs> I don't think it looks good. <laughs> Personally. Bracketology. No, no. Here I am on <laughs> can, we put a, it, the, can we put a test screen up while we're in recess? Yeah, sure. <coughs> Mr. Slackman, you're, you're out late. I thought I would have a gamble. Good, good meeting. It's interesting she brought up World's End. You know that World's End was at one time, it was on the final list board. to be the other site of the United Nations? I read that. Yeah, let's it put was, the other board up. You're going to be second, right? Like three or yeah. four sites in the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Where is that? World's End. Hang on. Really? When they were citing the United Nations, it was on the final list. Wow. Because it was, it was all under the <laughs> it was laid out of house lots. Right. And it, but it hadn't been developed at the end of World War II. Other than the roadway. Yeah. Nobody access down Martin's Lane. <laughs> All those diplomatic colors. That's such a gorgeous place. I hope these people haven't been accessing it very well. I don't know the Well, you want, you kind of must see that. <laughs> okay. Where's Neil? Stormberg, are you still here? I'm still here. You know, I hardly recognized you. Look good. Shadow you from myself. Something like that. All right. Wait for Neil to get back in. Thank you. Oh, merci beaucoup, monsieur. And that's where we like this guy. It's okay, Neil. I'm all set. What's that? You want to sit, Bill? I'm all set. Yeah. Go across to your go across to your office. Get some. And then call next application. Yes. Uh. Mm -hmm. Ryan Allen LLC of PO Box 395, Road. Seeks a finding special permit and or other relief that the board would 
main grant pertaining to general law, section 28, section 6, and the 60 million bylaws, including section 470, 820, 952B, the 60 zoning bylaws, authorized non conforming uses located at 12 first Mr. Hello, uh, Hello Bill, Bill Arnberger. I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicant, Ryan Allen, LLC. Sean Harris is the manager of that, but Sean will not be participating in tonight's meeting because he's a public official. But there's a property owned by the, uh, uh, Sean's wife is here, and uh, it's owned by the Harris family, owned for some period of time. I also have a surveyor here, Ralph Cole, who's under the weather with the flu, but is a, quite, quite a trooper. And uh, Barbara Thassell, our engineer. I also have uh, Lawrence uh, Gogarty, uh, president of Irish Consulting, who's, our, uh, uh, who's helped design and work on some of these buildings. Uh, it, just by way, of, by way of backdrop here, there's two things which we're asking uh, for the board tonight. Uh, back approximately 10 years ago, uh, there was a petition before this board, and, and it was determined that of what the nature of the pre-existing non-conforming uses were on the property. And amongst myriad uses, uh, some of them were an auto body repair shop, the other one was for uh, vehicle and truck storage and like what. What the, what the proposition is tonight is, is twofold. One, we're looking for what, in, in layman's terms, what we're looking to do is Mark Fasciano, who owns the uh, auto body shop, Mark was uh, dislocated by the MBTA off of Sockbridge Road, a longtime businessman, and uh, the Harrises were able to accommodate him. He had over 4,000 square feet of space before the MBTA took, his, took the property. They really didn't help move. He's been trying to exist as a local business within 1,500 square feet of space, and for a period over 10 years now, and what he's, what he's looking to do is increase the size of his auto <coughs> body shop for, in a nutshell, so he's not going to have to be working on vehicles outside, having his workers outside, getting more stuff under the roof. Similarly, uh, Sean Harris Enterprises has oil trucks on the premises. Uh, particularly in inclement and cold weather, uh, they don't have adequate area to house them. The proposed, what we're simply proposing is to get the truck storage under the roof. By getting it under the roof, not only for, you know, safety reasons, but also for noise reasons, particularly in cold weather, no idling of trucks, you can work on trucks, we get everything. We're not, we're not requesting that we're changing any uses here, simply we're getting these things under a roof. So that, in a nutshell, <coughs> is what we're looking for, a finding to that effect. In addition to that, uh, part of the property here is in the, is in the uh, town's uh, floodplain and watershed protection district. And what we also need is a, is a suit, uh, determination of suitability. And as, as Barbara will tell you, uh, this district is one of those funny things. And what I meant is actually the property, and you can see from the elevation lines, isn't subject to flooding, but, you know, that whole side of the road is within it. So uh, we're going to demonstrate that we, we should get we, uh, the determination suitability. We meet that, but the simple fact is any of the work on either of these buildings we're contemplating is in zone X. It's not in the flood elevation, and even the revised flood elevations are far away from this. This is a 13-acre parcel. You, the, the plan you have only shows a small portion of it. And the reason for that is the first Herring Brook is back beyond the fences in the uh, <coughs> property. Uh, and so that, that's where, you know, where any, the flood zone uh, comes into play. Uh, in addition to, if we're granted the, the relief that we're seeking from this board, in addition to that, we're also going to get whatever applicable permits are necessary from both the Conservation Commission and from the Planning Board. So this is our, this is our first stop. So <coughs> at that, 
and I, I think I think Ralph's a little bit under the, under the weather here. Uh, I don't know if the board, if the <coughs> plan, so if Barbara, if you if you want to, on the plan, in a nutshell, you can see where the auto body shop is and where the addition to it is approximately 1,500 <coughs> square foot addition. And in addition to that, you also see, and there's a rendering there, of the vehicle storage building is basically behind, and you, and you have the rendering of this. And Lawrence, <laughs> if you want, if you want to, uh, okay, Bob wrote. <coughs> yeah. And we're, we're not, we're not, we're not. We're not talking about any variations or changes in parking in traffic patterns or anything else. And one of the things which I, I believe you have in your in your filings is uh, there is both letters uh, of comment in saying they don't have any issues from both the fire chief and the police chief relating to this site and impose impose. Okay, so um, again, Barb, with the self for the record, uh, what we have here on this plan is, is a colored up. Um, Line this 22. That's that's the um, the FEMA flood line right here, well in the back of the property. Um, the proposed addition to the building is right here, right off of this building. That's actually on a paved area. So there'll be no <coughs> there. Um, and this is the proposed building that Bill's speaking of mostly. Uh, the stormwater that we've decided to deal <coughs> with on this project, because it's obviously very high groundwater is actually to remove a portion of the pavement that's closer to the wetlands so that the net increase in flow from the site would be mitigated through removal of the impervious surface area. Um, again, what Bill's talking about in, um, regarding zoning is this is the watershed protection district determined by the situate zoning map, um, elevation 30, quite a distance from the FEMA map, which which is fairly new, um, 2012. So I, th right. I think that would be why one of the stronger arguments is that this is pretty decent information <coughs> that we're dealing with here. Um, and all the proposed work is, is well beyond that elevation. Yeah, how, many, how many feet from it? Are you saying where the, the proposed addition um, <coughs> for the one for the garage? There's already a slab there, and you're just going to. It's, so, <coughs> it's already impervious surface in both areas. Yeah. Well, this is all paved. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so. It's been paved. <coughs> it's been paved for 60 years. Isn't exactly. It? Yeah. It was an old junkyard. So, uh, in essence, uh, and I, I, well, I don't mean to ask Barbara this question. She can answer. But I'm going to have Lawrence show you the building. Lawrence, if you want to put that up. Uh, in essence, that, that's a, that's a rendering from First Parish Road. And as you're probably aware, one of the things under the other thing, there is evergreen buffering, in the, and there's a substantial fence. That's up there to try to buffer this from First Parish Road, and uh, <clears throat> you know this building will accommodate the ability to, to get the oil trucks and other vehicles off, you know, off of the site into the property. Uh, one of one of the other issues is under not this here and there. There's a there's a small existing uh, barn on the property on the and I guess <coughs> uh, on the east side. And one of the things, the, one of the initial intention was uh, from, uh, from the oil company was to try to get these, uh, to get some of the trucks in there, but structurally they had to raise it and they couldn't raise it. And so this would, that's one thing that is undone, <coughs> would permit all these vehicles to get them undercover. Is this just intended to be a storage or is there going to be work going on in the big building? Inside the building? It'd be via vehicle repairs. And things along those lines, particularly with all this brutal weather we've had lately, is you know hydraulics, and I, I don't pretend to be uh, a mechanic, but you just can't do the work. As a matter of fact, there was some uh, there was some calls and some other things that were just in this past month that were necessary 
that the vehicles could not perform and they had to they had to get off-site repairs and other things done because you know you, you can't get the vehicles warm. And one of the other things is you know hey idling trucks on cold days this actually gets it inside so it's a bu it's a noise buffer also this is for work on existing vehicles say again work on as existing vehicles yes. around the property yes not correct and what's the height of the um, proposed large building? 32 feet. And, and what are those? Uh, I know there's trees on there that have been growing for a few years. How, right. how, how high are they now, and how high are they going to get? <coughs> there's a fence uh, here that, that's six feet high. These, these vary in height. Um, there's some, some evergreens. Uh, and to be honest with you, I don't, I don't, I don't know how, how tall they will ultimately be. There are some uh, some deciduous <coughs> trees here as well, so it's kind of a seasonal thing as to how much you would actually see of the roof. <coughs> could could I just add there as well that the building is set lower on the property, six feet lower than the street, so maybe the building's thirty-two, but it's actually a twenty-six foot. You know, visual. You, you, can, you can actually see from the side elevation on the plan. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So yep. this, this is a view from <coughs> here, and the street. In other words, on the sidewalk here. So that's, again, depending on the season, is essentially what you would see. Do the vehicles are going to go all the way around oh, the yes. other buildings to get access? Yeah, they'll set. They'll, 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 how they go in existing Frank? They go in by the between the gas station and the auto body yeah. repair. That's where the opening is in the in the uh, in the stockade fence that's there. And how many how many buildings? I mean, how many um, how many uh, trucks can of the oil trucks can get in that building? Well, there will be six uh, six overhead doors in all. All would depend on the length of the truck. Yeah, all the oil trucks in, in in can can fit in the building. I don't know how many oil trucks there are. I, I mean, I'm asking how many how many are there? All could be six. There's about there's about, there's about four, but why don't you say that it, this could definitely accommodate? Because in addition to that, it can also accommodate not only oil trucks but also the ancillary vehicles that are used for you know in vans used for repairs and. You know, maintenance and all those things. All related to the oil business. Correct. Yes. Okay. But in a larger sense, this property may not may this building once built, the property may go to another use. It not necessarily an oil truck. You know, it could be a, you know a small um, truck vehicle repair. Uh, you know, yeah. all of this is is allowed within the pre-existing uses. Right. And I think the question that I would get to would be, what did we decide in 2004? And I. Every, I recall being here, but I really don't recall all the details. Yeah, I have the decision here. But right? I think it had we had went through yeah. went through a great deal of discussion yeah, as to what pre-existing yeah, in, in uses there's, were. There's hours of operation. There's, there's and, you know, and I know that some things have been done that have been um, yeah. that were requested at that time. The berm was put in. The, the trees were planted. That we right. were talking about that that have been growing and other yeah. things. Just ju just just important. a quick snippet of not all inclusive, but. <laughs> The, the existing pre uh, the existing legal non-conforming uses per the decision of June 3rd 2004 other <coughs> things were car dealership auto body repair motor vehicle repair shop service station with motor vehicle repair inspection station storage buildings uh, towing service exterior motor vehicle parking exterior junk storage consisting of assorted vehicles and 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 parts that was that's not all of it but that's I think at that time also it, it was even a, a continuing, um, yeah, a, a, a class A yes. junkyard license, which would allow a, a shearing machine to be in there exactly. and other equipment. So, I mean, this this parcel has a long history of industrial type usage, stuff that we would not even entertain. And the applicant was before us in 2004, and agreed to limit the use to. <coughs> Um, and we, I think we defined it in the decision. I didn't review the decision, but yeah, there, there are hours of operation for the various things. There are certain restrictions, and what we're not asking today to change any of these uses. All we're simply doing is asking that 
two of these uses, namely the auto body repair element of it and the, and the truck storage that we allowed to be put them under a roof. That's what we're looking to do. Is the auto body, um, isn't there a Quonset hut kind of thingy there? Yeah, that's the, that's the 1,500 square foot building that they're putting the addition on. Right. Okay. Is that whole building getting changed? Or is Quonset hut? Yeah, is, is Mark here? That's right here. Right. Yeah. Mark, uh, there's Mark Fasciano right here. Hi. And the Quonset hut is my office. Okay. The Next. shop is, to, if you're facing the Quonset hut, the shop is to the left of that. That's the 1,500 square foot building. This is okay. the Quonset, that one. That's the one. That's okay. The yeah. So, That's so this is going to double your space essentially. Correct. Okay. And is it? Are you going to so double the bays easy. too, or how do you? What well, do you there would be three bays. The way that the um, the way the floor plan is set up, there would be three garage doors on the back side of the property, which is on the other side of the fence. Okay. What do you mean the other side of the fence? There's a fence there that bisects the... Oh, 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 okay, got it. You would have to actually drive through the fence to go around to it. Okay. And you'd be able to pull straight in to the back of the building? Back in, pull in. Okay. Where do you get your car fixed? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is... I, I only... I, I bring this up only because it's... I think this is the fir third time we've had the um, a hearing for needing to make changes on this property. Uh, the first one that I recall was when the state um, changed the the inspection Correct. procedures, and they um, they needed to add an inspection bay that had that was, long, that was long enough to meet the long enough to meet yeah. the requirements, and it went in behind the existing um, uh, gas, gas station right. service shop. Um, these kind of building changes would seem to me to be customary and usual, um, in, as technology changes as requirements change for equipment. Um, I almost want to say why are you here, but I, I think it's uh, so that we all know what's going on there and we know why it's going on there. And we can use this as an opportunity, and I think maybe the neighbors, <coughs> if there are neighbors here, may use it as an opportunity to say, um, have we met some of those requirements that were in the 2004 and uh, the decision? Because we, we were very clear on at mm -hmm. that time Right. That uh, we needed to try to make this a, a friendly neighbor. Yes. And, I, and that's. That'll probably be good to get. No, no offense to the trucks, but get them off the. You know, probably be look better. Yes. Be nicer in the neighborhood. <coughs> trucks will be happier too. The trucks will be happier. <laughs> and the, especially the people who have to work on them. But we're going to be very happy. So there'll be no exterior storage of these uh, for these vehicles anymore then? For. Well, there wouldn't be any over. There wouldn't be any exterior overnight storage of them because you know sometimes there's trucks coming and going and oh, they're sure. around the yard. Well, overnight, yes. Yeah, yeah the, the trucks will be inside overnight. Yes. Okay. Um, and then the determination of suitability that's under four seventy. Four seventy. Yep. And then, and as, uh, and as as Barbara said, the, the uh, this district has a, a you know a, a 30 elevation, sure. and the femur elevation is 22, which we've shown on the plan, which is way far away of that. And the determination is if the property, in effect, is not subject to flooding, and <coughs> by the by the own federal maps, it's not. It, it's one of those things. Just like when you look at the flood uh, the floodplain in the Watershed <coughs> Protection District, it was really a political district. Because as you notice, for instance, all of Situate Harbor is not included in it, which is all subject to flooding. So it's kind of one of these ironic things. Yeah. So, 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 so that's exactly why there's a, a determination of suitability in acknowledgement that this isn't, you know, right. isn't exact. We don't have overwash? No, no not here. <laughs> don't fall. Okay. All right. Um, does the board have any questions? Well, actually, just a quick question. What uh, material they're going to be using for the building? Asphalt roof, similar to what you have on uh, some of the other buildings now? And we're actually uh, we're anticipating that it would be a metal roof um, because there's, there's uh, I mean, because of the pitch actually the, the size of the roof would not be uh, suitable for asphalt shingles because you know, because it is a low pitch. 
And the, the idea of the low pitch is to keep the height. Keep, of the keep the height down. down. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you have to have the height of it to be able to get the the vehicles in. Yeah, but I bet get uh, the overhead doors. Are they twelve right. or sixteen foot doors that they've been in? Fourteen foot. Fourteen. Fourteen. Fourteen foot. Okay. Yeah. Neil. So, so if we wanted to condition an asphalt roof, we'd probably see the. The yeah, I mean, I think the building's a low profile, and I mean, I, I think there's a um, lot to be said for uh, the, uh, being the trucks under cover and low profile, and, and, and that, I mean, there appears to be sufficient screening. Yeah. And I think on the uh, auto body, my understanding is work going on outside, which which is, um, you know, it seems it's probably necessary. So. Um, anyone from the audience uh, wish to be heard? <coughs> I have a comment. Yes, ma'am. I'm Jen Gagan, I'm 65 Common Street, um, across the street. I guess my biggest question um, for the neighbors would be based on the 2004 rulings, um, why some of the corrections and things that were talked about back then haven't been followed through on. Um, I know we've sent you all some letters in the past when some of these pieces have come up and then, you know, it's never gotten to a meeting. <coughs> how, well, are, how are we a adapting and changing if we haven't kind of finalized what was set forth to begin with? Well, could, I, could I address that? Yes, you please. I have met with the neighbors, uh, I think for about an hour. I explained the procedure. Um, we do not have the resources to monitor what's going on behind there. There's, there's just too, too much to do. Uh, we are going to town meeting to try to get another building inspector. Uh, if they feel there's something that's in violation, they need to write me. Uh, I have 14 days to respond, and I will take care of it. And the last time I was down there, um, there was some metal that, you know, had removed, and I think there's some food containers. They're gone. Um, and there's an understanding that the... Um, the red barn that was there, it was impracticable to pick it up. And I think there's a, a boat that was supposed to be moved that's sitting there and, and uh, it's currently for sale and, you know, hopefully gets sold quickly. But I don't know of any other outstanding violations. I haven't heard any tonight. But I would prefer to hear them in a letter, if, you know, if that's, I mean, that is the procedure. The Absolutely. procedure is not to come before the Zoning Board of Appeals right. before action is requested from me. It has not been formally requested. So, so, do you understand what Neil I said? Totally understand, yeah. I'm yeah. one of the people that met with Neil right. um, back around Thanksgiving time, and at that time, as part of the conversation, actually, we talked about the fact that things like the boat were going to be gone. Um, and he did draft a letter on December 13, 2004, in response to the neighbors, um, that does talk about the commercial fishing vessel that it did need to go and would be removed by July 1, uh, 2004. So it's 2004? 2014. Yeah, July 1st, 2004. Okay. It's 2014. But, but procedurally, so tonight we are here for a very specific thing, that, and that's for the, the, the expansion of the building and the proposed, you know, story <coughs> building. If there are issues um, that, um, y you know, the owner of the property has not complied with prior orders then that there's a process by which you do that. Right, and, we understand the process. Right, right. But we also understand from Neil at that meeting that he, as part of that process, he has tickets that no longer work in yeah, town. That's correct. Um, so it, it's kind of an interesting process, and I guess the, the primary concern is the neighbors aren't necessarily against the changes and improvements, but I guess that we want to know that they are for the continued betterment of the area. Um, I, I, I mean, as, as part of that discussion as well that we had, um, Neil pointed out to us that um, <coughs> he recalls as part of the original agreement that the um, grass man, who also is one of the businesses there in front of the Red Barn, um, was not necessarily supposed to have the signage and things in the front there. Yet that's where they parked their trucks. We were under the impression they were supposed to be parked in the back. So they're parked in the front with the signs all over them, and as of late, about the past month and a half or so, there's also what appears to be a junked car out there that's just sitting out in the front. Um, I mean, I, I guess if you're saying that we need to go and put these things in writing, that's fine, but I'm wondering. I, I actually have a suggestion. Yeah. I think this, this permit can be conditioned 
Um, the, uh, the problem with the, the, the trucks uh, with their big signs out front, there was no provision in the, because I've come through it, um, and it, it, uh, they basically said no working on lawnmowers out in the front. They didn't restrict the trucks out front, but um, I, you know, I think it's, uh, to me, would be a reasonable condition uh, that these big trucks with their signs not be out front. Um, and I think another reasonable condition uh, would be uh, <coughs> before a building permit is issued, that boat gets moved. I, I, <coughs> can, I ask, can, I, can I say something? The, the boat First of all, you, all right, you, you know, um, you just have to raise your hand and, and then tell us, tell us who you are. Charles Harris. Boat belonged to my son Charlie Harris, um, passed away. I'm trying to sell the boat. If anybody knows commercial fishermen, you cannot sell your boat. You can't give them away now. You know, so I've been trying to sell it. Okay. Now this is a fishing community, isn't it? There's a lot of boats and yards. I mean, what's the big? Does the boat look that bad? Yeah. You know, she's worried about a boat. No, I'm sorry. All right, all right, all right. First of all, oh, all right, Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris, please. I need to talk. I, I, okay. I'll, I'll solve this problem. Okay. All right, um, Chuck. First of all, um, I, Jen will tell you what I told the neighbors. I think it's the prettiest thing in that yard because I love boats. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I, the other suggestion <clears> I had was that we modify the decision to, you know, the boat's for sale, and in, instead of having a condition in there. And I do, I'm going to say, what is so awful about that boat there, with everything else in there, that the board modify the condition and say the boat can stay there until it's sold. Uh, you know, that works fine for me, too. Either way, we've got a condition that's in a, in a special permit, and these folks come to me, and, and they, 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 are, they deserve to have these things enforced. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's frustrating to me also. So one way or the other, you know, I think it needs to be addressed. Well, we're not here to, we haven't been asked to modify the, the permit. That's the problem. Right, exactly. You know, so I don't know how we can do that tonight. Yeah. So, um, so, you, so you condition, you put a condition there. Well, I think we can't, I think we're being asked to um, have a finding that this is an acceptable next step for the property. And uh, we had a decision in 2004 where we basically did the same kind of things. And <coughs> to be completely fair, a lot of stuff that was asked for in that um, decision was followed through. I mean, the berm, the trees, the fence, the, um, it's, it's an improvement. Um, question of boats, um, I can see a future request to use this property is for boat storage um, at some time. Not, I'm not saying from this applicant, but I'm recognizing that with more and more waterfront property um, disappearing for boats to be stored in the winter, I'm seeing more boats being stored in places like this. I, I teach in Marshfield, and right next door to me is a large boat storage yard, um, Sims uh, Boats. And it's not, it's, a, it's not terribly unattractive, and it is 139, and it's a whole lot different from, um, uh, from First Parish. But it's, what we're talking about here is um, the board has a right to condition things, and the applicant has a right and has a responsibility to be a good neighbor. But um, as I said in 2004, we can't put a use, we can't condemn the use of a space that's been used in this fashion for a long time um, based on the fact that there are new people who live in the neighborhood. I mean, they, you bought the house, I'm assuming, because I, I don't think you're old enough to have bought the house before Paul Young's was there and before the junkyard was there. So it was with some fashion or another, there's been um, a commercial use there. Um, I'm concerned when we're talking about telling trucks they can't park off the street um, because they have signs on them. I mean, it's uh, <coughs> this is what this property's been used for. And if we're going to live in a town where we condemn the use of any kind of commercial um, trucks being parked, um, we're not going to have any services. Um, that's part of the nature of, of being a good neighbor. It should be done in a clean way. It should be done in a proper proper way. We should look to have um, property owners maintain the property in a, uh, <coughs> the highest and best level. 
I can say that property has been improved a great deal since 2004. Um, I know the, at that time, I think, I, I don't even know that there was an active car dealership in there. There was a, it was kind of a much more quasi deal. Now I see a paved, a paved way with um, cars that are for sale lined up and clean and brushed off of the snow every day. Um, you know, it seems to me to be, have improved. And I just don't want to lose sight of that. I'm not suggesting that you don't still have some concerns. But um, I know Neil has also um, goes out of his way to make sure that um, concerns he hears from people in the formal process are addressed. He responds. Um, sometimes they make it to us for to appeal his decision. But um, we've got a very good working relationship in our town. And uh, Mr. Harris, please don't. Let's keep this civil, okay? If, yes. if I if I could just make another contract, just I think give you a little historical perspective. Um, the, the the initial concerns when this came to uh, a head in 2004 was that the uh, there was fishing trucks and vehicles in there, and the fishing business was going in there, and the neighbors were concerned about you know odors and everything else. And I think the board, you know, basically, okay, we're just going to ban all fishing. And I think I, I don't know if if in, in, I, I mean, I, I do. I look at the boat, and I look at a lot of trucks, and, and I say, you know, I, I, I like boats. So, <laughs> so I, 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 I thought maybe, you know, it, it would be a simple thing to do to modify, and I know that didn't come before the board tonight, but that would, that would have been my solution. And it is for sale. I mean, there's nobody using it for sale. Um, but is there only one boat? Just one boat. Okay. Yeah. Big boat. It looks like it's freshly painted. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Hi, Jen Gagan, 65 Common Street. Um, I think, unfortunately, um, you misunderstood what we were trying to say. Um, okay. It's really not so much that there's one boat back there. It's what the boat represents. Because based on the ruling from 2004, there were nine set uses for that um, area. Yes, of course we knew that it was commercial. And of course I knew that when I moved in. Um, and it has improved in many, many ways. But as I'm saying, <coughs> the thing is, is that based on those nine, boats back there is not part of that. And the idea that if things like that are overlooked, if now we're going to put in a 7,000 square foot building, we hope that it's used the way that it's being represented tonight and intended, and that it's not, um, you know, that it doesn't <coughs> lead to using it in some other type of fashion. That's all that we're asking about. As I said, we're not saying that we're not for the continued improvements. And it's not about the nitpicking over one boat. Um, it's more <coughs> what it represents based on the original finding. And I appreciate that. Um, and I remember reading it. And I remember, you know, in November, reading the concerns and, um, you know, recognizing <coughs> that it sounded like you had some pretty valid concerns. But even back then, realizing that the process to go through that is to, you know, ask Neil for enforcement of that order and then if that doesn't happen then come to us but right now this is this is before us um, <coughs> just with respect to these two issues I would have no problem conditioning you know vehicles with you know signage I don't think that that lot needs to be you know rolling advertising there's a big space with a with a with a you know fence that Vehicles with, you know, marked vehicles or whatever you want to call it, could, you know, don't need to be kept, you know, um, on the street. At the same time, I see a boat that's for sale under, you know, pretty tragic circumstances. I'm sure Mr. Harris would be very, you know, as hard as it is to, it would be good to have that boat resolved. And, and I would hope that, you know, out of the kindness and, you know, consideration of the circumstances, that we can overlook the boat and and hope that it someday is, you know, finds an owner to take care of it. But um, so I I'm not certainly for conditioning a permit on on the removal of the boat. I don't, and if and if you want to take that up with Neil, then on a more formal basis, which I get the impression that that particular issue is probably not the big one, um, then that's the way it needs to go. As far as I'm concerned. I, I'm concerned about um, conditioning anything. Conditioning anything that creates um, 
a hardship where a 7,000 square foot structure is going to be built and then conditioning it so that it can only be used for one thing and one thing only and forever and in, in perpetuity. And I'm particularly concerned because of, you know, I think maybe that 2004 decision we, um, and I participated in it, we added more to it than should have been in a, a finding of, of the well, maybe it needs to be, maybe but, the applicant mm -hmm. wants to amend it. But that, the, right, look, I'm forgetting that, um, but this is, I, I think this is very simple. Does that building offer, uh, does it create um, substantial detriment to the neighborhood? I think it actually improves it. Um, the, it improves the uh, ability to use the property in a way that is historic, consistent, and um, unchanged over the, uh, it's actually been reduced, the, the intensity. It doesn't impact the water supply. It doesn't, I, 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 I'm in favor of, of the improvement that they're proposing. What about a condition about um, no commercial vehicles um, on, on, I don't know how we'd phrase it exactly. Yeah, I, I think that might be a little more slippery slope than we're there, because you get vans now with more than six square feet of signage on them. Yeah. Yeah, right. any, any, now you get murals on the side of trucks or vans, that, uh, or cars, uh, for that matter, that have murals that are you know, advertised, or they're parked out there. Just well, are they on any regular basis? Well, I mean, they I think they be. can't be. Well, they shouldn't be stored there. But uh, by I mean, rights, I they could put that. a big sign on the, on uh, the property. I'm going to, I just want to, I, I actually think this is an expansion of nonconforming use, what has uh, gone on with the uh, landscaping trucks. And I could make that call, but I think we're here in front of the board. Oh, well, there uh, you go. Yeah. So that's done? Yeah. Okay. Is that the only issue? Is the landscape, the Mr. That, Green? That, well, you know, it, it's it's the, the sign is glaring, and I'm not sure sure if I have jurisdiction to cite a sign that's on a vehicle. I, I think there's yeah. some talk that registered motor vehicles doesn't allow that, but um, I do think it's an expansion, and I, I think it's I think I don't know it's it's the I, I I think this is an appropriate time to bring it up in in condition. I think it should have been done in the first place because that was the intent as it was the intent not to have a fishing business there, and I think right. they comped a the boat in with it. And, you know, it's just, it's, I mean, we have boats that big in people's backyards, frankly. Right, yeah. right. Yes, so anyway, I don't want to confuse the issue, but that, right. that would be my request. Okay. Ann Finney, 56 Common Street. Um, and like Jen has said, the boat is not the issue. The trucks with the sign on are not the issue. Been down. We've met with Sean. He showed us around that back area. It's been very helpful. He also, at that time, said he was not going to go ahead with this extra building, which was just last fall. We talked about expanding the auto body. We had no problem with that. At that point, we were told that that building was not on the table at this point, and now all of a sudden, here it is. It also was a little disconcerting to get there and say, see that it's Alan Ryan Allen. Oh, okay. Well, it's probably Sean Harris. 126 First Parish Road, it felt like something was trying to be slipped in, but whatever. Our concern as the neighbors is that the rules have not been followed. The things that were put out in this 2004 letter and so forth, I wasn't even back living there then. But the rules haven't been followed. The things haven't, some things haven't cleaned up. It looks really good. There's a lot of things that we really are very happy about, but our concern is if the rules aren't being followed now, What's to ensure us that they're going to be followed in the future as this thing grows? And we had another mess up the other end of our street at Starkbridge Road that turned into a nightmare of stuff happening back there that nobody's keeping track of what's going on back there. We don't want the same thing to happen at the bottom of the street. I know that's a different situation, but we have no confidence that the rules are going to be enforced. That's the biggest concern, I think, of most of the neighbors as we've talked about it. Can I just address this, you know, uh, the, the, I'm, I want to say what rule, and I, I do really didn't want to bring this in, but there, I have been over there, there's no, there's no major violations, it's the, the boat, the barn, and a, occasional, you know, oil tank that, you know, Sean gets rid of okay, right away. that's three violations of things that are supposed to be taken well, no. care of. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, you, excuse me, but you have to let Mr. Duggan answer he's talking and then uh, we will recognize you and you can I've explained my dilemma with the boat the uh, red barn it, it just was not going to happen Sean has been talking about coming in front of this board for years 
and I keep saying, okay, I mean, what are you going to do? Take a beautiful antique barn and, and you know, just, 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 I mean, I think that's an, an attractive building at that site. And I personally think if he had elevated and turned it into a commercial barn, it, it would have detracted from the site. So finally he's here, and I think we're addressing it. That's being addressed. I, I made my, I think, case pretty clear on, on the boat. And, and what else is there? Substantively, that's not being enforced. And, and keeping in mind, there's one of me. <laughs> and let's keep in mind that this is not an enforcement hearing. Yeah. If you, if there are issues that aren't being enforced from the 2004 hearing, uh, 2004 decision, then there is the process that you have to request enforcement in writing. Mr. Duggan has four, uh, 14 days to respond, <clears throat> and if he doesn't do it. Then you get to come in front of us, and then we will we will resolve it. But you know, and, and we're not putting you off. It's just this. It's just the that's the process. Um, you know, these are the issues that are before us today. The other ones can't. You know, we can't make we can't we today tonight cannot. <coughs> you know, change how change what's going on with with what's presently that you believe is improper. And the issue with respect to the name, it's this is the proper name. The you know Sean Harris is was he's not the owner of the property. Ryan Fine Allen LLC and, and, is the and, proper owner. And it's always been like I think you know on behalf of the Ashman takes some umbrage to that Ryan Allen is one of the deceased members of the who died tragically of the Harris family, and it was in you know it was in the honor of that that it was named that. But Sean Harris has never been the owner of this property. Sean simply, if you know what a limited liability company is, is simply the manager, the person who's in charge of certain ministerial duties. But in the overall things, just the, you know, just from my standpoint, closing is it's a lot of very positive things that have happened here. This is a necessary. There's a lot of local residents and business and ladies who operate their business here. Several of them were displaced by the MBTA. And there's a lot of good things. And yes, are there a few warts and pimples here that need to be addressed? Yes, we'll continue to do that. But I don't want to, all of the good things and the improvements we're doing, I don't want this to cast a shadow over it. Those are all things. There's a proper mechanism if something's that, if something's that important, then it's a mechanism to deal with that. We're always, the Harris family is always open to talk and to try to be good neighbors. I said one of the things going way back to 2004 is, Hey, the, the, the post office was owned there. The post office isn't, isn't subject to any regulations being a federal thing. You know, they could have trucks backing up at 2 a.m. in the morning. You know, we're subject to all kinds of hourly operation regulations, which is all good, because that's what we want to do to be a good neighbor. That's all. Mr. Or yeah, let me chip on for a minute. Let me agree with that. This is probably one of the most conditioned decisions that came out of the, the board. Right? I, in my spare time, I was also on the ZBA. And we agonized over a lot of it. We worked out through with the neighbors. We all envisioned what this could have been. Right? And we came back up and we put the, the fencing up, we put the, 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 the trees and, and everything else to come back up and to do it. And we took our best shot at coming back up and defining conditions that would basically integrate that into the neighborhood as best we could. But recognizing, as Bill just said, it's a business. It's a collection of businesses. Right. And you go back to what Vin said. I mean, you, you got to do what you can to support the businesses. And I think to put conditions on this that would say restricted for you know oil truck use only or something like that, I think is going far beyond what I think is, needs to be done on it. And I think if there are issues, unlike. I guess I have to agree also with Neil is the fact that I, I've never met a boat that I didn't like. <laughs> and my, my wife will verify that I've got a couple in my yard just because of it. But as I say, I think you come back up and you've got to look at, step back and put a little common sense as to what, what it is and recognize what the site is and, and go from there. So, thank you. I think it should be a huge improvement having the, build, the <coughs> vehicles in, in a closed building. Right. I think the, um, didn't the last permit, I don't have it in front of me, um, did you restrict from overnight storage ex uh, outside last time? Uh, restrict what? No. No? No. no. 
I mean, there, there was it, basically the whole property was outside the storage. Yeah. What we were, what we were trying to do last time, Extra. as much as anything, was to um, take the the um, shadow of a continued use as a junkyard off the table. I mean, that was a that was a big concern. Yeah. I thought there were some limitations on how many trucks could be parked outside overnight or something. Am I not? Don't no, recall. the intent was to take the activity that, that's on the site and basically look to move as much as we could behind the fence. Right. Well, that's where I think it'd be good to keep it. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I just think this is an opportunity to improve the site. We've got, uh, you know, even the, um, uh, the, uh, Auto body shop. You've got three bays. You're putting the storage from, from outside to inside. Uh, instead of tarping vehicles and stuff that he has to do now to run his business, he can put them all inside. Behind again, behind the stockade fence, out of sight. It help to clean up the site. Then again, just the adding of the bay, and the noise factor, the vehicles being inside, being worked on, started up. That's going to keep things. Uh, uh, you know, and again, it's behind the berm, uh, uh, low, and I think. Uh, I think they're all good improvements. Um, anything else from any of the members of the board? Any any um, anything else from any of the um, audience? Yes, ma'am. Opening fifty six Common Street. I just want to say again, uh, at the risk of repeating, that the neighbors are not the ones who are asking for any of the restrictions or conditions or whatever. That wasn't what we're about. Yep. We're just yeah. concerned about what's not been done that's been requested and how that could get out of control in the future. We're not necessarily opposed to the building, the expansion of the auto body or the new building. It's, it's the other stuff <coughs> and the junk and all that that's still back there. And I'm still not convinced that there's not a threat to the water supply back there with all the deteriorating trucks and whatever's coming out of them. But um, I just want to make it clear that we're not the ones who are even asking for those restrictions. Okay. No, I know Mr. Duggan did. Anybody entertaining Mr. Duggan's uh, restrictions? <coughs> no. No. I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, but yeah, that's fine. No, I think it's probably. I mean, my view is a different, a different forum. We should address sure. that issue. That's fine. I, I don't disagree with Frank. Okay. All right. Um, All right, do we have a motion? <laughs> We've had one for each of us tonight. Um, that doesn't count as being overturned either. <laughs> <laughs> no, the record still stands. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying, I, I frankly, it's one of those things I've been, I've been concerned about why we we're even here, because I don't think we're actually authorizing to we're looking to authorize any changes of non-conforming. We're looking to. Um, oh, we're extending it. it. Sure. I'm, I'm not even sure you're extending it. You're just <laughs> you're putting, you're putting a building a expansion of non-conforming use. Absolutely. Oh, could we put a building on it? Well, to absolutely. Continue to do what you're already doing. Absolutely. Right. Move of the board finds um, that the proposed uh, new buildings on the site. Um, Will not substantially be detrimental um, to the neighborhood, and are appro and are an appropriate uh, expansion of the non-conforming use, as previously uh, decided by this board in 2004. I want to refer to the plan. Um, yeah. The uh, buildings, as as proposed on the plan, dated. Um, Dated February 25th, 2014. No revisions. By uh, MR Surveying Inc. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And I think we need a second vote on the uh, oh, section 470.9 on determination of suitability. Okay. Uh, Suitability of the use? No, no. Is in other words to yeah. say that the that the, that the land. Uh, oh, because of the floodplain. Yeah, it's not, right, and because right, of the right. floodplain and watershed protection district that the that the proposed use is is appropriate, and that the property is not subject to flooding. Okay. 
move to find that under 470.9, the um, use is appropriate in the floodplain watershed protection district and the property is not subject to flooding. And not unsuitable because of drainage conditions. Okay. Second. Second. We have to list the conditions so that's going to take care of uh, be in the the decision. removal of the pavement. That's well, that's, yeah. uh, that, that's that, in the plan. That's, that's, in, the plan. Yeah, that's on the plan, and that's going to be uh, well, we have to condition that because we're going to go to the Conservation Commission. If they want that we'll, we'll, take we'll, care we'll deal with whatever okay. it is. Okay. Um, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Got a thousand to go. Mr. Lumberger, Attorney Lumberger. Huh? Can you um, draft the proposal? Yes, so we'll draft the proposal. You're just going to go back and make Jeff write them. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> He's much more eloquent than I am. Delegate? Are you delegating that? Delegate, delegate, and delegate again. Not as bad as when the, uh, they first came. Oh. Okay. <coughs> Move to adjourn. Good job. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone.